Top for Manchester United, and what a finish in that game. It was 3-3 final Everton scoring goals in minutes number 91 and minutes number 93. So Wayne Hurley in a bit of hot water, and uh, it's not the first time, Mr. Jones. Legend. Legend. Hey, legend. 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 I, I, I highly doubt that, actually. Roethlisberger, I think, you know, where, where there's smoke, there's fire, and uh, this is not the first time Rooney has been in a uh, alleged situation. So, and, and talk about sadness in Italy. Italy's Association of Football Players announced a strike on Friday for the weekend of September 25th and 26th due to a contract dispute. Now, it centers around a proposal by club presidents to limit players from refusing transfers, as Fabio Grosso recently did with Juventus following an offer from AC Milan. The strike was announced in a statement read by Milan defender Massimo Odo. It was signed by the captains and the union representatives of all 20 teams in the Serie A. Players also did this once before in March of 1996 due to several issues, including the Bosman ruling, which uh, gave the players the right to switch clubs freely once their contracts were expired. And Mike, can you imagine the weekend of the 25th and 26th in Italy without soccer? It, it's, uh, it's a sad day. <laughs> it's a very, very sad day in, uh, in Italy. So uh, it, it's, it's upsetting that things have to come, come to that point sometimes, but uh, both sides, there's two sides of, both of, of the story, and both sides think they're right. It, it, it's a tough situation, and... I mean, we're facing the same thing with the NFL, you know, coming come at the end of this year. So you, you make a great point. They might do it, you know, during the off season maybe, but the equivalent of that is like the NFL going on strike in three weekends. Yeah, a, a lockout. A lockout. Yeah, a lot, imagine that. Yeah, if there's a lockout next year, then it, it'll be sad. And it's happened before in the NFL. So let's move on. David Beckham preparing for his LA Galaxy comeback, and he has a vow from Fabio Capello that he will be considered for England if he is fit and in form. Beckham, of course, had the ruptured Achilles while he was on loan with AC Milan earlier this year. That made him miss the World Cup in 2010. And uh, I don't know, Mike, what do you think about that? Well, every every single player is competitive. They always want to play at the highest level that they can. And, and uh, I give props to Beckham to continuing to pursue what he wants to do. And he's, I mean, he, he's a solid player. He, he'll definitely benefit England from that from from wherever he is on the pitch. If he, if he still can keep the fitness, if he can keep up with the younger and faster guys, then, uh, you know, Capello's going to keep him. And, and Beckham's going to prove himself. He's going to try to prove himself. And he's not going to give up. He's supposed to feature this evening uh, on the bench, at least, to start against the Columbus crew. Out of Portugal, Coach Carlos Quiroz has been sacked immediately. The move comes a week after the 57-year-old was suspended for six months for disrupting an anti-doping test. The former Man United boss was also criticized for Portugal's poor performance at the 2010 World Cup and the Euro 2012 qualifiers. Quiroz, a former boss at Real Madrid, and really... Going down in a bit of uh, in a bit of disgrace. Well, uh, you can't interrupt you can't interrupt things that are going on. I mean, if if, if the associations are checking for drugs, you can't interrupt it because obviously he knows something that the association doesn't know, and uh, he's trying to prevent something that uh, is pretty much inevitable for some of the players if they are doping. So Portugal looking for a new national team coach. Mike Kerms has the resume on file already. Good job. Right, Portugal. No. No. Okay. Right. And finally, the U.S. made its pitch for the World Cup. Now they have to wait. FIFA's World Cup inspectors had a three-day, five-city visit. They were in Houston on Thursday. They toured Reliance Stadium as they're looking for venues for the 2018 and 2022 tournaments. The 24-member executive committee of soccer's governing body will vote on December the 2nd. Europe expected to be awarded 2018. It's going to be England, Russia, Spain, Portugal, and the Belgium, Netherlands competing. The U.S. is facing Australia, Japan, Qatar, and South Korea for 2022. The inspectors also visited New York, the White House, Miami, and Dallas before hitting Houston. World Cup 2018 or 2022, if that's the case where it's coming to the States, uh, I'll buy my tickets right now. Yeah, it may, I don't know if you ever did that lottery, though. It, it's, a, it's a tough situation. It, it'll be interesting how they're doing it. 12 years from now. I mean, I, I'm thinking 2022 is their best shot, and it's going to be the United States or Australia. 
in, in, in that case. And um, the United States might have their hands down on this one because I, I think FIFA would like to spread a little bit across the world, and, and they haven't hit they haven't hit that oceanic region, region yet. So Australia may have a better shot if they have a better pitch than the United States. All right, we'll keep you posted on any more news out of FIFA and the USA's hopes for the uh, World Cup in 2018 or 2022. All right, that'll do it for the pregame show. Mike Kerms and I will take a short break. We'll get ready for kickoff as the Rochester Rhinos are taking on the Tampa Bay Rowdies here at Marina Auto Stadium. Thank you for listening to the Rochester Rhinos pregame show sponsored by Finger Lakes Gaming and Racetrack on Sports Radio 950 ESPN. All right, Mike, you ready, kid? Yeah, I'm ready. Knock him dead. I'm leaving. Huh? I'm out. All right, Mike, so you're going to come back with um, Johnny's going to give you the feed for the TV open, basically. Are, are any of them still? Who, me? Mike Brandt. Uh, I know Brian and Jeremy are still in Buffalo. Sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Mike. Bill I could down in Florida. Dinger's still, I, don't uh, know. I think he went back to KD. It's like their operations guy. Are the only out air people that's still around? Is, that, is it Howard? Howard's really only on air person still. Moran, that's uh, a feed down from the field. That's somebody else talking. Yeah. I think uh, Bob Trimble or not ended up going to Pittsburgh or something like that. Um, I think I think the first to leave. Hi, Mike. We got the right? Gary. Yeah, she went back to Ohio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Josh, Josh left. Josh is in Chicago. Sounds good. Um, I'm not sure where Vermonte ended up. Man, dude. Um, I thought I saw him on like a New York channel for yeah. a while. Kind of a, kind of a equivalent. Yeah. I don't think it was MSG, but it was, uh, it was something like that. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> um. After 15 days between matches, the Rochester Rhinos winners of six of their last seven return to action this evening when they kick off against the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Rhino soccer is next on the Rhinos Broadcast Network. Can't hear it.
this is the second and final meeting of the regular season between the Rochester Rhinos and the Tampa Bay Rowdies. The Rhinos enter the match in second place with 48 points, while the Rowdies are just outside of the eighth and it? final okay. playoff position. Hello, soccer fans, and welcome to Marina Auto Stadium for Rochester Rhino Soccer. I'm Joe Giuliano, joined by our color analyst, Mike Kerms, tonight for the Rhinos and the Rowdies. It's been a long break, about 15 days for the Rochester Rhinos, winners of six of their last seven, and we'll see if they can find that magical form that ran them to the top of the table for a short period here in 2010. Hey Mike, uh, welcome back. And as we break down the Rochester Rhinos this evening, uh, you wanted to start up top and look at the uh, the dangerous striker, Isaac Kissy. Yeah, Isaac Kissy. He's got five goals this year, and, and and he doesn't have a lot of time on the field. But in the in the time that he's been, he's produced for the Rhinos, and he's dangerous with the Tampa Bay Rowdies' young defense. They've given up a lot of goals. Kissy's going to be a handful for the Tampa Bay Rowdies tonight. On July 22nd, these two teams played in Tampa. It was a one nothing win with Kissy getting the game winning goal. Now for the visitors, the Tampa Bay Rowdies, they've got a player who's got magic in his left foot. Oh yeah, Sanchez, he is magical. He he played he played for the U17s and the U20 in, in Mexico and he's just magical. If if the Rhinos give up a free kick within 25 yards, if there's one or two, if there's second free kick, you can almost guarantee that there's going to be a goal and he's just he's magical. He's going to spray the ball all over the pitch tonight. I think the Rhinos are going to have a handful tonight with uh, Sanchez. Stick around, the first half kickoff is next. It's the Rhinos Jeffrey and the Rowdies Hunter. on the Rhinos Tonight's broadcast network. All right, Mike, I go to break. All right. <clears throat> no, <laughs> you're right. Do we sound okay to you? Mike Kerms, okay. Right. Test one, test one, How's test, that? test, test. Is that better? One, two, three, okay. four, five, six, How's seven, that? eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Three, four, five, six, seven, check, check one, check, check two, two, check three, test, test one, test two, three, four, five. Mike, Moran, my level's okay. Kerms talk. Hello, check. Kerms is talking. One, two, Tampa Bay Raider. Okay, hang on. One, try, two, try check, 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 check. Check one, check two, check three, check four, five, How's six, now, Mike? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay. H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Check, 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 check. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. He's telling me the same thing. Test one, test two. Mike, John said it. it doesn't make any sense because he's sending it the same exact way. Test three. One, two, three, four, five. All right. I'm not yelling. How's that? Is that better? Hello, check one, check two, check three. He's eating the microphone. Check four. Is that better? I took care of it. I fixed it. I'm not yelling. another 30 because we're doing the anthem right now. Or actually, make it another minute if you can. Yeah. 
Another 30, Mike. On this day, as we remember the events of September 11, 2001, the Rivals would like to ask you to take a moment to honor the lives we lost, the heroes who responded in our hour of need, and the brave men and women in uniform who continue to protect our country at home and abroad. Thank you. And now please join us in a moment of silence tonight being performed by the Rochester Chorus okay, of we'll come back. Lines. Take her jacket. to Rochester Rhino Soccer on Sports Radio 950 ESPN. Joe Giuliano, the national anthem uh, taking place. for Rochester Rhino Soccer. Tonight, the Rhinos take on the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Rochester is 14, six and six. The Rowdies are six, nine and 10. It's been 15 days since the Rochester Rhinos have been in action. That was a two nothing loss in Montreal. So they've won six of their last seven. They have been in excellent form and they are led by Bob Lilly. Uh, let's look at your starting lineups this evening first for the Rochester Rhinos. It'll be Neil Kitson in goal. He has a 0 0.79 goals against average. The back four, it'll be Roberts, Greenfield, San Filippo, and Pitch Colin. In the midfield, Montegalvan, Rosenlin, Versailles, Hamilton, and Spicer. And up top, it'll be the leading goal scorer, Isaac Kissy. He has got five goals this year. For the visitors, the Tampa Bay Rowdies, they are coached by the Scotsman, Paul Dalgleish. And they're going to start with Lambeau in goal. Josh Lambeau's only played three games this year. He gets the nod this evening over Sattler, who was the goalkeeper who played in that uh, game down in Tampa, who made that crucial mistake off the goal kick, leading to Rochester's uh, only goal and Rochester's three points that night. So Lambeau, 19 years old, gets the start in goal. In the back, it looks like it's going to be Valentin, Diaz, Morrow, and possibly Yates. In the midfield, it'll be the New Zealand international Christie with Millian, Steele, Sanchez, Nyazamba, and King up top. Talk about a power-packed, loaded midfield. You've got a New Zealand international player. You've got uh, Ricardo Sanchez, Jonathan Steele. That is a lot of talent. As we bring in our color commentator, Mike Kerms, as uh, the Rowdies make their first ever visit to Rochester okay. and uh, a little photo going on as uh, Billy Sedgwick's uh, great charities uh, taking center stage, Goals is the name of the charity, and they're being uh, honored and celebrated here this evening at Marina Auto Stadium. Uh, Mike Kerms, welcome back. 
for the Rhinos and the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Yeah, I mean, if, if you didn't know, uh, Bill Sedgwick is he's, he's running a marathon tomorrow for Alicia's Angels, and he's, he's doing it for goals as well. And, I mean, he's just always giving back to the community, trying to give back, and uh, it's great to see all these little kids out there for goals. And Billy's running a marathon, and if anyone wants to donate, I believe it's Alyssa's Angels. Um, you guys can find it, Google it, Alyssa's Angels, and you'll be able to find where you can uh, donate to. But let's get back to the game here. I think what Daglish is trying to do, he's trying to put the best 11 players he's got on the pitch at this point. The, the defense, they've been giving up 33 goals. They've given up 33 goals this season. And uh, so maybe he's trying something different. They're in, a, they're in a bind here. They have to win in order to make the playoffs. They're, number nine, they're ninth in the league, and they have to win here against the Rhinos. Yeah, Tampa is tied with Minnesota at 28 points, but the Minnesota Stars currently hold the advantage, uh, the head-to-head -head advantage, where they've won two out of the three games. They'll play one more time on August or September the 24th for the Rhinos. Mike, they're coming off a very emotional game up in Montreal. Ali Gerber scored two goals. It stopped Rochester's uh, six-game winning streak. And uh, it was an amazing electric atmosphere up in Montreal. Now there's a lot of time off. Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing for the Rhinos to have that long break when they've won so many games in a row? You know, it, it, it's uh, when you're streaking like that, sometimes you want to keep going. But if you get to a loss like that, this could be a great thing for the Rhinos. You know, they, they, they were on that streak. They lost the game. All right, let's decompress a little bit. Let's take a few days off and let's come back and let, let's let's uh, rejuvenate here and see what, what's gonna what, what's gonna come out of it. And and both teams have, have been on a little bit of a rest, so we're gonna see what teams come out of what team comes out of the rest a little bit stronger. Tampa played on August the 29th, a 2-2 draw with St. Louis. The Rowdies will be wearing the yellow and green striped tops with the green shorts and the uh, striped socks. And for the Rhinos, it's the black and white striped tops with the white shorts and the white socks. The Rhinos will be attacking the goal to our right. It's Rosenlin and Kissy to do the honors. Rochester again tacking the goal to our right. We are underway at Marina Auto Stadium. Kissy tries to come forward, immediately stripped there by Christie. Out of Jonathan Steele. Finds Naya Zamba in the middle of the park. And the Rowdies with possession on the far side. Julian Valentin with it. Over to the near side for Diaz. First touch for the 19-year-old Cleeper, Josh Lambeau. Plays it out to uh, Julian Valentin. He is the team captain. Valentin, number four. A 23-year-old was the captain also of the U.S. under-20 national team. There's Diaz with it. Some possession here. Christie, the New Zealand international, lays it off for Diaz, who goes with a long ball. Down the near sideline and out of bounds. Throw in for the Rhinos. Right at midfield, Frankie Sanfilippo to take it. Spicer checking back, receives it, lays it back to his team captain, San Filippo. Kissy, a little flick into space. Rosenlin has it on the near side. Tries to step over, lays it back to San Filippo, looks up, drives a ball into the box. No one there but Jonathan Steele for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Steele has been a huge impact. Seven games played with Tampa, one goal and three assists. Is uh Again, 24 years old. He's had a long career already, Mike. Yeah, he's uh, he, he, he's a fantastic player. I, I mean, two years ago, he was league MVP. He's 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 only 24 years old. That's I was right. I was driving out here, and believe it or not, I was looking at some of the notes, and I'm like, I just kept saying to myself, he's 24 years old. Actually, he may be 25 now. Who knows? But I start thinking, you know, this guy was playing with the Rhinos five, six years ago. Was he going out to the bars when, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. Some of the bars should start looking at their, uh, you know, what was going on there. So He's a youngster. He's got a lot of talent. He's yeah, got he's a, a long career ahead of him, and it, it, it's fantastic to see Johnny still playing in the league, and he's still playing strong, he's, and he's got a better attitude. That's the thing. He needed to grow up in that area, and exactly. he did. Versailles plays a ball to the far side, intercepted, and taken away by Jonathan Steele. Here's Ricardo Sanchez. Sanchez and Steele came over from Vancouver. Sanchez, of course, played with Minnesota the last few seasons. Has the ball now. Plays it back to Diaz. Diaz, number 13, another 23-year-old from Cuba. 
Sanchez is actually down on the turf, holding his left shin. He's up and hobbling back into play. Naya Zamba gets there first before Rosenland. The Rowdies knocking it around in their own half. Here's Christie now spinning through the center circle. Here's Morrow. He's first touch here. He's on loan from San Jose's first appearance of the year. King trying to get it back to him. Sanchez with a left-footed shot from 25 yards out. Doesn't trouble Neil Kitson. And while we have a break here in the fourth minute, we are scoreless. I'd like to pass along a special hello to the uh, Rochester Rhinos owner, Rob Clark, who is home down in uh, Utica, New York, enjoying tonight's game. Uh, on the uh, webcast side of things, Rob, good luck tonight, and hopefully we'll get the uh, three points for you. Kitson. Gets his goal kick high and up over midfield. Good job by Versailles. Gets in front of Nyazamba. And they're going to call a handball here and quickly taken by Nyazamba. Down the far side. The Rowdies whiff on that one. Get a second chance to cross it in. No one there but Monto Galvan for Rochester. And now it's played on the far side looking for Hamilton. He's dragged down and they're going to call a foul on Hamilton here. And I'm not sure if I agree with that one. Well, Johnny got in there a little bit late, but uh, Hamilton kind of, I, I guess it, he fell, and it was a little bit of a, Hamilton took him down, and Steele was stealing the ball. It could have gone either way there. So a free kick coming up here for the Rowdies. Fifth minute and scoreless. Sanchez, who can deliver a pinpoint ball, has this service from the far side, whipped into the box, through the six and into the arms of Neil Kitson, who's having a uh, great season this year. 0 0.79 goals against average. He's given up 12 goals. Mike Rochester's goalkeepers are number one and two in goals against and two and three in goals against average. That's a nice one-two punch. Yeah, absolutely. With the Rhinos giving up only 20 goals this season, they're number two in the league with goals against this year. And, and it, it has a lot to do with Kitson, Vallo, and plus the solid foot back four. Yes. I, I mean, there's a really five guys that play back there. And they're solid, game in and game out. And that's why they've given up the least amount of goal, almost the least amount of goals in the league. There's Hamilton on the far side, back to Versailles. Looking for Greenfield, tries to play it off of Steele and finally gets through Jonathan Steele, comes forward down the far side. Greenfield still with it. Corner of the 18 for Rosalind, spins on his right foot for Hamilton. Yates does a good job tracking back. Steals the ball there, Sanchez, good touch. Quickly out to the far side. The counterattack is on for the Rowdies. Steele, one-on-one -on -one with Greenfield. Cuts it to the inside. Crosses into the box. Pitch Colin backpedaling, gets his head on it. And we'll see if this goes out for a throw-in, and that's what it is here. Deep yeah. in Rochester's half of the field. Yeah, although the Rowdies are, are ninth place in the league versus the Rhinos at third place in the league, the Rowdies have scored 33 goals this year. The same amount, uh, one goal more than the Rhinos this year. And you can see, I mean, look at the guys on the pitch. You got Steele, Sanchez, Naya Zamba. You got Moro, his debut here. It, it, it's, uh, if, if the Rowdies pick up their defense next year, this is going to be a very, very strong team next yeah, year. I think you nailed it on the head because they've scored 33, but they've also given up 33. And that's where they're going to have to uh, get a little tougher on next year as Steele has it on the far side. Steele cutting it to inside around Hamilton. Takes it with the left foot. And Kitson gets to it inside the six as Aaron King was trying to redirect it on the flick. But Kitson was there, rolls it out to San Filippo. Kissy checking back, receives it and turns. Down the near sideline for Spicer. And not what the Rhinos wanted to do there. Because Spicer never had a chance to get that one. And you could see right there, that that's where Tampa Bay falters there. Uh, Kissy, Kissy checked back. Diaz does not follow. You've got one forward and the two center backs, two of them just watch Kissy come through that midfield. So now he's between Nayazamba and, and the back four, and that's where Tampa Bay may falter a lot. Let's see how they hold up here tonight. They fell apart in the last game in, in Tampa, a stoppage time goal. Stepped in there is Valentin, intercepting the pass by Versailles. He clears it over the far sideline. We're in the eighth minute. Rochester and Tampa are scoreless. This is the second. And final meeting of the regular season. There's Ricardo Sanchez, takes the throw in on his left foot back to Diaz. Now on the near side for Morrow. Again, he's on loan from San Jose. So Tampa not afraid to pull the trigger and bring in some reinforcements. 
as they're making this big push. Christie goes long. Here's Steele outside the 18 to the top of the box for Yates. Plays it forward again. Sanchez, one time left footed volley block there by pitch Cohen. Sanchez hobbling again as the Rhinos come away with it. Far side, Anthony Hamilton. Hamilton having a great year, four goals and one assist. He's kind of tailed off a little bit, but Hoxie has picked up the slack when Hamilton has tailed off. And that's the great thing about this team right now is you've got, if one guy's starting to falter, Bob's got options. And he's given these guys all game time experience on the pitch so they all can step on. They're not nervous. They're ready to go. And they're all foaming at the mouth to get on the field at any point in the season. This is a young Rochester team. A few veterans sprinkled in there. As Yates pokes it forward to Naya Zamba. Here's Jonathan Steele. Overlapping on the far side now. The Rowdies going right at Greenfield. Spinning around is Millian. Back to Naya Zamba. Now just changing the course to the near side. Morrow played his college soccer at Notre Dame. Comes back to Valentin. Naya Zamba now for Steele. Hard touch there, but Naya Zamba gets to the ball before Kissy. Tampa with some possession, middle of the park. Trying to uh, break through this solid Rhinos defense. That's chipped into the middle of the park. Walter Galvan heads it forward. Rosalind spins away. Comes on the near side to the new father, Frankie Sanfilippo. It's Frankie Jr., I'm sure, uh, cheering on dad this evening. Troy Roberts gets his first touch. Roberts has been an Ironman for the Rhinos. Has played every minute this year. Pitch Colin looking to receive it. Roberts goes... Back to pitch Colin now. Crowd trying to get behind the Rhinos here. Long ball down the near side. Over Morrow onto the uh, foot of Kissy. And Diaz will step in and knock it out of bounds. No, they'll say <laughs> Kissy was the last one to touch it. And I think the youngster out of uh, University of Dayton may have a bone to pick. But he's got to play the whistle and deal with the, uh, the referee's decisions. Here's Pascal Millian to Naya Zamba. And Valentin, top of the box. Tampa, 11 minutes in and scoreless. Uh, maybe a little better possession so far early on. Yeah, they look they look solid. And, and, and like we said, I think, he's putting the, I think he's putting the best 11 players on the pitch. You've got Millian, who's a two-time All-American from University of Tampa. I was talking to Adrian Bush, who's the coach of University of Tampa before the game. And Millian, he said, is he's just so dangerous on that outside flank that it, there's, there was no doubt in his mind that he, this kid would be playing pro. And you can see he's got Millian on the pitch, who's normally a midfielder, and and that, I think that's what Daglas is trying to do, and you can see the possession that Tampa's keeping. Dangerous ball back to Kitson as he quickly came off his line outside the 18 to clear it away. Rochester with uh, a little unnecessary pressure for their goalkeeper as they'll try the near side with Spicer. It's a poor first touch and gives Christie a chance to come in. Swipe it away. The Rowdies regroup defensively. Throw in for the team captain, San Filippo, right in front of the Rhinos bench inside the middle of the field. And that's a tough decision by San Filippo. Chance here for Steele to push it down the far side. Hamilton on his horse, tracking him down, slows him down. Forces Steele to go backwards to Nyazamba. And the pressure pays off for the Rhinos as they have possession with Monte Galvan. Here's San Filippo now. 12 minutes in. We are at zeros. Great crowd here this evening. For the second to last home game of the regular season. On Friday the 17th, Miami FC comes to town. Good combination play here. Rosalind is down the near sideline. Tries to cut it back to his left and just can't keep possession. And this one goes out of bounds. It'll be a goal kick for Lambeau who's another player who's on loan from FC Dallas. And uh, Mike Dalglish in Tampa Bay, led by Perry Vanderbeck, their GM. They're not afraid to bring players in and uh, give them a shot. Lambo's 19 years old. He's owned by Dallas. I mean, you see guys sitting on the bench in the, in, in the MLS. Why not bring him in and give him some playing experience? And the MLS, I'm sure, welcomes that. Just, yeah, sure, if this guy's going to get some playing experience when we need him, we'll bring him back. And... Uh, Morrow's one of those guys here today, and, and Lambeau, and it, it, it's 
it's great to see that these guys are getting playing experience. It's great that they're in the MLS, but if you're gonna sit the bench, you're not gonna get that experience. And with the uh, MLS reserve system going by the wayside, a lot of these players have uh, trickled down into the second division. I mean, look what Bob's done with this team this year. He's, he's allowed every single guy to get playing experience, and now they're all ready to step on the pitch. If you've got Amaro who's been sitting the bench all year, he's not gonna be able to step on the pitch for, for, the, um, for San Jose. At what any a point. good ball from Montreal, but onto the foot of Spicer. Cross into the box, header by Rosalind down into the turf, just doesn't connect on it. As Lambo able to scoop it up, and that was straight down into the turf, right at the uh, keeper's arms. Some great vision by Mato Gavon there to see Spicer going up that line. And what a great cross by Spicer. Beautiful. Rosalind could have done a lot better with that. I, I'm sure he's going to sit at home and say, you know what? Maybe I should have taken that one down with my chest. Maybe I could have gotten a little bit more power behind that. Rosalind knows how to find space in front of the goal. Spicer and Morrow get tangled up. Spicer gets a second bite at the apple and wins a corner kick. 14th minute. This is the first corner kick for the Rhinos. It'll come from the near side. Great defense by Morrow there. The, the main objective as an outside back is when, when, the, when the midfielder's coming down, prevent that cross. And that's what Morrow did there twice against Spicer. Good work there. And corner kick for Rosenlind in the 15th minute. As of now, Tampa credited with three shots. Here's Rosenlind's delivery. Outswinging service. Pitch Colin, they're going to call him for the foul on Valentin as he had his back to the goal and uh, maybe a little dramatic with the uh, <laughs> the right-footed shot. Uh, I think Pitch Colin was, was thinking was bicycle it? Yeah. <laughs> as, as he was holding on to the waist of Diaz there. So he Definitely had that in mind. Well, Chris, I think he had Christie, actually. As, uh, the Tampa Bay coaching staff is bundled up here as... Dog leash and Vanderbeck got the, the jackets on. It's a cool evening in Rochester. No, you gotta love Tampa. I mean Dog Leash, he's got his get, he's got a guest belt on, he's got nice jeans on, and then you've got Bob who's got nice pleated pants on, good shoes, tie, you know, two different characteristics here of two different coaches. Dog leash wearing his uh, going out clothes as yeah. Steele steps in front of this one. Yeah, Dog Leash is ready to hit East Ave. <laughs> Valentin steps in front of that one. Naya Zamba has it now. I'm sure he's hoping for a win here. Tampa Bay definitely needs a win. And both teams here need a win. The Rhinos want to be first in the, in, in the league, and Tampa Bay just wants to make the playoffs. Here's one of those dangerous overlapping runs from San Filippo. Gets the ball. Near side of the 18. Low hard cross. Valentin neatly, calm and cool, steps it away. Yates coming forward now. Spins it around towards the middle of the field. Goes outside for Steele. It's not going to get there. Greenfield anticipates, reads it well. Rosenland. Versailles now. Back to Jonathan Greenfield. 16 minutes in. Spicer checking back. Now back into space down the flank, and it's going to get away from Greenfield into the arms of Lambeau. Three games played this year, five goals against. He's got a 1.67 goals against average. As Tampa coming off a 2 2 tie with St. Louis on August the 29th. Diaz scored in the 90th minute to pick up the point. And Mike, you said it earlier, they're, they're turning losses into ties. We'll see if it does uh, turn into wins for the Rowdies. Good move here by Kissy. Gets away from Christie. Now forward for Rosenland. Montegalvan is going to go forward, goes sideways to Versailles. King now pressuring Roberts, lays off here. Roberts time and looks up, gathers the ball to pitch Colon. Yeah, I mean, since the addition of Sanchez and Steele, this team's changed a little bit. You can see they're a very possession-oriented possession team. The first five minutes of the game, Tampa, Tampa was dominating the game. The Rhinos have gotten a little bit better of the match right at this point, but Tampa's a much better team with Sanchez and, and Steele for sure. I think Sanchez would have been a great addition to Rochester a couple of years ago. Well, there was talks of trying to get him here from Minnesota. Not going to work as Diaz steps in front of the pitch colon pass. Plays it to Christie, who played in the 2010 World Cup with New Zealand. Look for number Christie. He wears number eight. Millian gets tangled up in the ball. Hamilton says thank you very much. He'll come forward with it to Greenfield. 
Oh, Rosalind trying to turn forward for Kissy. And Diaz does just enough to stick the boot in there and clear it away for Tampa. There's Sanchez. He's got Morrow on the near side. Taken away by San Filippo. As Mike said, Rochester now starting to put their stamp on this game. Monto Galvan. On the far side with a lot of time, a lot of space is Greenfield. They'll play it back to his young midfielder, Alfonso Monto Galvan. That's a nice ball. Splitting a few players there, and San Filippo has it. Versailles is dumped by Sanchez. No call, and the Rowdies have the ball. Christie can't push it through. Monto Galvan to Kissy. It's going to turn those Jets on. Just couldn't get away with the ball. And it ends up on the foot of Lambeau. And, and not to uh, to criticize the keeper, but he doesn't look like he's the, the tallest or the most fit of goalies. He's kind of short and stocky. Yeah, he, he also, I mean, even on that last play, Joe, the ball was kicked up in the air and it was trying to be a clearance and he didn't know if he should grab it or uh, kick it. And the ref, 99.9% .9 of the time, is going to let that go. And so no intent to play it back to him. Yeah, you could see the in it. I mean, right away, you could see the inexperience, but he needs game time. He's only got three games in the prof professional leagues here. He's a U17, U20 national team keeper, so we know that he's a good keeper. He just needs game experience at this level. He's getting his fourth look of the season. By the way, the officials this evening, the man in the middle is Nico Bratzis, James Bell, and Jeff Gonterek on the sidelines. Bill Engel is the fourth official. Julian Valentin with it. Former draft pick of the LA Galaxy. Now the team captain of the Rowdies plays it forward to Naya Zamba. Threads the needle to Sanchez. Spins around, gets it to his former Vancouver. Good leave there by his former teammate Steele. Into the box for King, who is nudged off the ball just enough by San Filippo. Unable to redirect it towards the frame. Great build up there, and it's Sanchez, dummy by Steele. Beautiful. Million overlap, and he's the one who I said was dangerous from University of Tampa. What a great cross and a great crashing run by a guy who's got nine goals in this league, King. And uh, San Filippo, you know, he was a little bit beat there, but you know what? Held on to him. You're not going to get called in the 18 on that sometimes. You're not. And uh, I think San Filippo made a good decision. King with uh, nine goals this year, as Mike said, missed the last two games with a hamstring injury, but he is back and. Uh, Running the top line. Pitch Colon. Versailles checks back for it. They change it over to the far side. Millian is one on one with Hamilton. Hamilton spinning. Now Steele comes in for the double team and knocks it out of bounds. No one here for Greenfield and the Rhinos. 21st minute. We are 0 0. Marina Auto Stadium. Rhinos going to end up uh, their last two home games with the boys from Florida. Miami comes to town next Friday evening. Greenfield takes a look up on the far side, corner of the 18. Right-footed chip into the box. Lambo picks that one up and quickly rolls it out to Sanchez, and that's a dangerous giveaway. Crafty little back heel finds nothing but trouble. Kissy has it now. Kissy and Diaz fighting for it, and Kissy call for the foul on Yendry Diaz. You know, that back heels, that's one of those things that I tell my kids. Stop the back yeah. heels, you know. But Sanchez is the guy that can do it. Yeah, but that area. <laughs> yeah, but if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Sanchez. I agree. I don't want any of the kids I coach to ever do that back heel, <laughs> ever, on any part of the field. You erase it, it, that from your memory. It's always a risky play. Christy chucking back for it, gets it out to the far side. Naya Zamba back to Julian Valentin. You know, you've got this kid, Valentin, 23 years old and captain of the Tampa Bay Rowdies. I mean, that, that's pretty impressive. He's got the most minutes on this team this year, and it, it, it's got to say a lot for this kid. 23, year, 23 years old, captain, he's got to be a heck, heck of a team guy. Also a captain, as we mentioned earlier, with the U.S. under 20s. That's a good move by Naya Zamba to avoid the pressure. Steal the no-look pass tomorrow. Now Yates, 35 yards out, middle of the field to Millian, way over on the far side. Sanchez taking the space where Steele just was. Still dribbling with it, still looking up, trying to make something happen. Steele tries to uh, leave again, but this time King can't get on it. That's one thing about Sanchez. 
just waiting, waiting, looking to make that difficult pass, that one game-changing play. He's got that knack that a lot of players uh, would love to have. And he, he, he's playing the same position as Rosalind on the field, so you can see that he's all over the pitch. He goes from the left side to the right side. Both teams playing that 4-5-1 with King up top for the Tampa Bay Rowdies and Kissy up top for the Rhinos. It, it's, uh, it's always a, a chess match. Hamilton almost got in, but Valentin came over as the central defender. Knocked it out of play, throwing for Rochester. Far side of the field, deep in Tampa territory, Rosenlin. Tough one for Hamilton to deal with as Roberts chops it forward for Montegalvan. Heads it on the near side. Crossed by San Filippo. Rosalind Millian battling far side of the 18. Rosalind gets the deflection back on his foot. Chips it into the box for Kissy. Corner of the six. Got his back to the goal and cleared away there by Valentin. I'm sorry, Diaz. And out of bounds on the far sideline. 24th minute. Rochester, Tampa are scoreless. Good ball from Greenfield. Finds Rosalind. Does a nice job to move off the ball and receive the pass. Low cross to Hamilton. Takes the turn. In the box still Hamilton has it. Right footed cross blocked. Chipped in again and just wide of the far post. As Lambeau was helpless there and they'll say it was deflected by the Rowdies and they're calling for a corner kick here on the near side. Definitely a good try by Hamilton. Why not give it a go? I mean, great stuff by Kissy Spicer with a good little dink here. And all of a sudden, Hamilton sees it. It's bouncing. Why not give it a go with the outside of your left foot? Possibly hits the outside of the far corner. Corner kick number two for the Rhinos from the near side again. Rosenlund to take it. As there's a good look for those of you watching on TV and the internet of the uh, last chance by Anthony Hamilton. Rosenlund. One goal, three assists this year. Would love to make it four. Headed away by Diaz. Out of the 18 and to the near sideline. Sanchez does a good job to work and keep it in bounds. Puts it deep in Rochester's half of the field. Carlos Sanchez, 28 years old. Long ball by Kitson. Taken off the uh, right foot of Valentin. Now Naya Zamba. And Sanchez knows he can do better than that. He's played seven games with Tampa, Mike. Four goals, one assist. Not a bad mark for the uh, the Mexican. Absolutely. And then you've got Steele, one goal, three assists. So between the two of them, they both come from Vancouver. Five goals, four assists, and they've got they've got five ties. They're one, two, and five in the last eight games. They've got five ties instead of five losses, and I think it's it's a big part because of Steele and Sanchez. These guys are going to make the playoffs. They have a much they have a much better a much better schedule. They've got a game in hand than Minnesota, and I think they're a better team than Minnesota. Help see Minnesota one more time. It'll be in Tampa on the 24th, and you know, Mike, you've played in this league, and two very talented and uh, maybe at times a bit of an ego, Sanchez and Steele. Is there enough soccer balls to keep these guys happy on one team? Well, you've got Christie out there as Another well. One, yeah. a, a guy who, who you could see he wants the ball all the time. He's played for he's played for the he played in the 2010 World Cup. Got a chance here, two on one. Hamilton with Kissy, still one on one now. Top of the box. Hamilton tries to dribble around Diaz. Referee calls nothing. Will play on as he was probably going to try and play it to Kissy, but he may have been offsides, and that forced Hamilton to not serve the ball forward into that space. Yeah, very good defense by the Cuban national there. I mean, just another national team player knowing what to do, just letting, basically what he's doing is he's preventing the pass to Kissy and making Hamilton make a decision and allowing Hamilton to see the goal and then just slowly closing him down, leaving him with no choice. 27th minute, a great opportunity for the Rhinos. Millian crosses into the box over the head of Yates and Neil Kitson out of St. John's University. Rolls it out to San Filippo. So you, you. Rosalind has it middle of the field. There's a look at the uh, replay on the TV side of things here. Yeah, you see, you see Diaz. He just cut that angle down for Hamilton and just slowly closed him down and let Hamilton make a decision. And then Diaz just stuck him right there. Diaz never panicked. That's very good defending. Look at that. I mean, just great defending by Diaz. He actually opened himself up for that one second. And Hamilton was wrong-footed. At that moment, that one moment was the chance that Hamilton had. 
but maybe Hamilton looked up and Kissy could have been offside there as well. Yeah, I think he was just a step or two behind the defense. And Hamilton had to rearrange his uh, thinking and what he was going to do, and that was just enough for Diaz to step in and crush the Rhinos two on one. Yeah, I mean, that's a little bit with the inexperience with Kissy. I mean, he's 22 years old. He's got to flatten that run out. He's just, he's just going straight. He's on the railroad track at that the one tracks, point. That's who he called, yeah. All he wants is that ball. And, and if he just runs a little bit flat and actually opens up to the right side of the field a little bit more, Hamilton could have slipped it behind Diaz or could have slipped it a little bit over him. I think that's one of the toughest things in soccer to teach, especially young forwards, to get off the train tracks. Flatten your run. You've got to flatten your runs, and um, it, it, it's, it is a tough thing to touch and to teach, and that's why there aren't a lot of great forwards in the United States. Very tough to find and develop. As we are in the 29th minute, Rochester had a golden opportunity, a two-on-one chance. Diaz was up to the challenge, so we are still scoreless. I mean, you look at the U.S. men's national team. Our best forward this year was Josie Altidore. Is he the best forward? Is he even close to one of the best forwards in the world? No. <laughs> and we don't have, the United States does not have that. And it's the toughest thing to teach. He's a great, solid forward, can make flat runs, can check back, can do the entire package. And uh, Brian McBride is probably the one guy who I've seen who could possibly do it all. He's one of the best, he's probably the best forward the United States has ever produced. Yeah, that was a nice piece uh, on him on foxsoccer.com. Uh, he pretty much set the standard for the American players. As Naya Zamba tries to get Tampa into their Rhinos half of the field. They do with Millian. Back to Naya Zamba. Now Christie. Kind of holding back here. Now coming forward, middle of the field, 30 yards out. Into space, Yates. Unable to get on the end of that one as it was deflected into his path. But had too much pace on it. Kitson rolls it out to Greenfield. Back now to Troy Roberts. Troy played uh, with Cleveland last year, the Cleveland City Stars. In what was a, a very difficult season, to say the least. Versailles. Good ball forward into space for Hamilton. And Millian just sticks the right boot in there. 30th minute, knocks it out of bounds. Corner kick number three for the Rhinos. This time they'll try the other side. There's uh, Mike Kerms wearing the silly bands this evening as they were handed out to the first 1,500 fans. And uh, I told Mike he's a little bit old for that, but still insisting on wearing them. I stole four packs, and <laughs> I've got them all on my wrist right now. All right, Rosalind with the uh, corner kick from the far side. Swerving ball flicked into space there at the six and headed away by Christie. Montegalvan chips it forward into the box. Hamilton with the header. It's going into the net. It's just wide of the far post as Lambeau again unsure of what to do there. Hamilton another good opportunity in the 31st minute. Rochester unlucky not to be on the board. Yeah, Frankie, Frankie and Sanchez, they, they, they challenge each other. Right before this play with Mato Gavan knocking him into the box, Frankie and Sanchez, they went for a 50-50 head. You never know what's going to happen there, and Frankie kept the ball alive. Mato Gavan just got his little pinky on it and got it, got it to Hamilton, and unlucky by Hamilton. He had the, uh, he had the net there, and, um, but there's nothing else he could have do, done. I mean, the ball was bouncing high. And Lambeau was caught in no man's land as yep. well. He, he looked very shaky in that last uh, stretch of play. As Morrow picks up a throw in here on the near side. So the chances starting to come here for the Rhinos. Hopefully they can make the most of them. Diaz looks up. Now goes back to Lambeau. Kissy did a pretty good job there. Did you see what Kissy just did? He kind of cut himself into the middle of the field to try to prevent the pass from going to the other side of the field. You want to keep the ball on the left side of the pitch, well, the Rhinos right side of the pitch, in, or, in order not to get, give us, uh, let them out on the far side. Kissy did a good job, and then he just kind of got a little bit lazy. He's got to continue to, to really cheat and not let that ball go across him. Being a lone forward, it's a tough thing to do. It's a lot of real estate to cover. But when you're 22 years old, the legs are there for you. Spicer, heavy touch. Yates takes it away. Naya Zamba with it to Millian. 
feels the pressure of Hamilton, so a little back heel pass to Christie. Crosses midfield. King is checking back. Back outside to Millian. Possession for Tampa here. Zamba. Plays it behind Morrow here on the near side. Intercepted by Monte Galvan. Spicer off his thigh, turns. Chips it forward for Kissy. And Diaz is going to win the race, but let this one roll out of bounds. 33rd minute. And the Rhinos with Tampa are scoreless. Don't forget Rochester is back home on Friday the 17th. It's awards night as Miami FC comes to town. Be sure to get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com or call 454-KICK for Rhinos tickets. Kitson whips it out to the far side for Greenfield. Two things the Rhinos are doing great right now. They're not allowing King to get the ball, and they're not allowing Sanchez to get the ball. And that, those are the two players that we were watching out for. The one that I picked was Sanchez, the one you picked was King. And those are the two guys not seeing the ball Oh, right good now. ball from Rosalind. Kissy, right-footed shot! Can't pick the corner out, and Lambo takes it right in the midsection. Great build up there. Pitch Collins, the guy, he wins the ball, and Kitson delivers that, uh, distributes that ball right away for that counterattack. And Tampa Bay is a little bit flat there. Another chance now for Rosalind on the near side. Just outside the 18. Takes a look up, crosses it in. And it's off the chest of Christie. And now forward to Morrow. There's King. Christie, a little too fancy there. Montagavan, thank you very much. I'll take it away. Spicer. Can't possess that one as he's having a tough go here on the near side. Going, or what they call it here, Mike? Offsides? Did the ball even go out? Yeah, it went out. Oh, it did go out yeah, quickly, yeah, so quickly taken. Yeah. As I missed the uh, Tampa throw in, I was looking down at my notes. The ones I spent so much time with, and Mike Kerms never even looks at. You've got, I don't need notes. <laughs> oh, wow, must be nice. <laughs> Off of uh, Tampa, and Steele doesn't like the call. So the Rhinos will pick up a throw in on the far side. We're in the 35th minute. If you're just tuning in, it's 0-0. The Rhinos have had a couple of good chances. Unable to uh, to rip the netting just yet. This pitch, Colin has it now. In his own half of the field. Takes a touch with the right foot, spins around. Now Monto Galvan with it. King and Sanchez come to pressure him. There's Roberts. To Greenfield. Patient and methodical here as Rosalind's bumped off the ball by the referee Nico Bratzis. And Tampa has a chance to come forward. Here's Morrow. His first appearance of the season to King. King fighting with San Filippo takes him down. And should be a goal kick for the Rhinos, and it is. King looking to get in there. Aaron King has been around this league. 2009, he played with Miami in 07 and 08. He was with the Charleston Banner. He scored 10 goals in 62 games played. And you can see that he's getting better. Nine goals in 23 games played. Gets in with the goal kick. He's got good distance on these boots and won nicely there by Diaz. San Filippo. Just putting the pressure back in Tampa's half of the field, and Kissy ends up on this one. Morrow on Kissy. San Filippo's overlapping. Kissy's still with it. Can't shut the needle there to San Filippo, so plays it back in the middle for Montegalvan. Chested down by Christie, and the Rowdies will come away with it. Steele, nicely defended by Jonathan Greenfield. On the far side, back to Valentin. There's Naya Zamba with it. Stanley Naya Zamba, 27 years old from Zimbabwe. Spent last year with the Columbus crew in Major League Soccer. Has the ball now to Diaz. Back to Naya Zamba, constantly moving off the ball, looking to receive it in space. Has this long ball played by Morrow. King is going to pressure Pitch Cole on the far side. He'll push him down. No call by Nico Bratzi. So now there's a handball. But in Aaron Pitch-Colin's defense, uh, the first push 
was the one he's upset about, and I agree with the big Reynolds defender. Well, he could, uh, the ref saw that as just a slip, and, you know, it, it's unlucky by Pitch Cole, and I was surprised as well. I mean, I it was clear that King had both hands, hands yeah. on his back, and Pitch Cole was just trying to shield the ball out of bounds. It wasn't like Pitch Cole was obstructing, obstructing the way there, and uh, unlucky for Pitch Cole. So this basically amounts to a corner kick for the Rowdies. And you know one of the rules that Bob told these guys was do not give free kicks away within 30 yards. And Sanchez is on top of this ball again. Spicer fronting the ball. Corner kick from the, or free kick from the near side. Top of the 18. Nayazamba just took too long to pull the trigger. And the Rhinos have a chance to counter with Spicer. Crossing midfield. Sanchez chasing him down. Trying to get it into space for Kissy, but Morrow steps in, takes it away for the Rowdies. Nayazamba has been very calm and cool with the ball. Good touch forward. Now it's Morrow coming at the Rhinos' defense. Left-footed cross. Steal. Top of the box for Yates. Left-footed shot. Blocked there by Pitch Colon. May have given Kitts in trouble if it was on frame. But as Mike talked about, the back four in front of Vallo or Kitson have been absolutely solid. Oh, yeah. I mean... That was an opportunity. You've got you've got a guy like Naya Zamba who tries to control that ball from Sanchez and try to instead of one timing that, that was an opportunity for for Tampa. And right there again, Yates, Johnny Steele plays a great ball to Yates, and Yates tries to bring the ball down rather than you got to put a ball on frame in order to score a goal. And these guys are not doing that right now. As King ran away from the ball, pitch Cole and stepped into it. There's San Filippo with some space to come up and. Take a look and see what's going on. Tries a right-footed cross. It gets over Million. Inside the box, taking down Anthony Hamilton. And Nico Bratzis doesn't hesitate at all. Right to the spot. Penalty kick for the Rhinos in the 40th minute. Now we'll see who gets the uh, nod to take this one. Yeah, great play by Hamilton here. Flicks it over Million. A young guy, inexperienced, and he goes for the ball from behind. And you know what? He may not have tagged him, but from the from the ref's angle, you don't know what happened. And uh, you can see right here. But look at Million's positioning. He kind of hesitates, tries to get back, and he's dead right there. Well, what happened was he tried to bite. He tried to win the yeah, ball. He tried to bite. And he goes around, and he just tags him just a little bit, and it's enough. And Hamilton does a great job. I, I mean, you know, you don't know if Hamilton actually got hit. But you know what? You're a forward. He's a natural forward. He's in the 18-yard box. You flop. All right, Greenfield to take this one. He's got one assist this year. Lambo is on his line. The box is cleared. Greenfield steps in. Slow. Steps in, and he scores! Goal, Rochester! 41st-minute common cool, Greenfield. Finds the back of the net. The Rhinos finally have scored to take a 1-0 lead. You know, you've got an experienced player at the PK spot, and you must have that much confidence in this guy. He's a left back for this team, and he must be the guy that wins the penalty kicks, the penalty kicks in the, in the uh, practices because just calm, cool, collected, waits for the young keeper to go to one side, and then he chooses the other side. He's one of those guys who does not, who just doesn't pick a spot. He's the guy who waits for the keeper to, to commit to one side or the other. He almost, it was like he took forever to run up to the ball and hit it. Like he said, he just waited for the keeper to commit. Calm and cool, slots at home. Run, he just walked. Yeah, I not mean, even was, run, you're he right. He walked, I mean, <laughs> there's only one other guy who I knew that was very, very good at that, and that was Tommy Tanner. He would just walk up to that ball, and he'd look at the goalie the whole time. The whole time. That goalie would commit. Boom, Tommy hits it to the other side. You don't have to put it into the bottom. You don't have to put it into the side netting if you're that good at it. True. Tommy Tanner, and now I'm going to put Greenfield on that list with Tommy Tanner. The Rhinos had, I forgot who it was a few weeks ago, had a PK. Were you with on, with on the broadcast when they missed the PK? Was it Spicer who maybe? I, I can't remember who missed it. That's why I was curious to see who was going to get the nod in uh, Greenfield. Check your notes, Joe. Made the most of it. I'll go through my notes in a second. We'll have that answer for you. <laughs> Here's Hamilton with Millian fighting again on the far side. Versailles, top of the 18. Right-footed shot gets away and off the mark. 43rd minute. The Rhinos have a 1-0 lead. PK by Greenfield. 
You know, it's funny, when we were about 12 minutes into the game, you said Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay has been awarded three shots. We're now in the 42nd minute, and Tampa Bay still has three shots. They've had opportunities. They've had counterattacks, but they're just not putting the ball on frame. This one bounces over the... Uh head of Yates and into the Tampa bench were Perry Vanderbeck and uh, when we were down in Tampa in July I had a great conversation with Rodney Marsh and he had some great words for Perry Vanderbeck a young American who broke into the North American Soccer League now he's uh, an administrative role here with the Rowdies Morrow tight space to work with here loses it to Versailles and he'll win the foul 44th minute Bratzis, the referee, doesn't like the extra touch by Montegalvan. And there you go. There's the inexperience of a left back. A left back trying to dribble out of the back. And, you know, luckily he got a call on him. But that ball, he would have lost that. That ball was stolen from him. And he, he, as an outside back, he cannot be dribbling out of the back, particularly into traffic. There's Christie. Naya Zamba. Pushing it forward, Naya Zamba, nicely intercepted by Versailles, but they just step back and they give the Rowdies a chance to regroup. San Filippo steps in, boots it up to Kissy. Foot race now with the ball, Kissy and Diaz. Diaz loses the battle here, Kissy. And Diaz comes in, it should be off of him. Let's see, yep, corner kick for the Rhinos. You know, you go straight across that back four. You've got Diaz, Moro, Valentin, and Million. 23, 23, 23, 24. I mean, that, that is an experience. And, and it's unfortunate for Tampa because they are, you could see in the midfield, but the midfield's not getting the ball. Nye Zamba's all over the shop. Sanchez is all over the shop. Steele is all over the shop, but they're not getting the ball. King hasn't touched the ball maybe three times this half. And he's your leading scorer. And you talk about the ages. Rochester's back line, 26, 30, 28, 27. Rosalind, corner kick, near side. Top of the six, right-footed shot, and a goal! Isaac Kissy takes it off the hop, right-footed volley. 45th minute, the Rhinos have a 2-0 lead. What a great cross by Rosalind, but Pitch Cole is the guy who takes his defender out of the center of the park and he shields the ball across right there. He shields the ball across right there. Kissy wide open. And Valentin is the guy marking Kissy and leaves him, leaves him loose. What's, once that ball bounces in the 18, which Tampa Bay cannot let happen, then, the, then it's free game. And uh, Kissy is the guy who puts the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, you made a great point. Uh, bouncing in the box. Uh, criminal. Major sin there. And the Rowdies were made to pay Kissy. That's his sixth goal of the year. Rosalind should get the assist. I'm not sure if anyone else touched it. That's his fourth assist on the season. One minute of stoppage time called for. And the Rhinos, 2 nothing lead. I mean, all Pitch Colin does is he shields his guy, which is a typical play. He, there's no foul there. He just shields his guy. And then Versailles, luckily for the Rhinos, Versailles missed the ball. And then Kissy's just there wide open. Good finish, though. I mean, the ball's bouncing. It's a tough one so, to hit. A little bit of a side volley. Keeps it down, hits it down. And you know what? Anything's going to happen. And Lambeau just wasn't expecting it. It just came across too fast for him. Could be the last rush here for the Rowdies. Cleared away by San Filippo. Yates with a throw-in. One minute of stoppage time called for. The Rhinos in the last five minutes have scored two goals. Christie. Top of the 18. King. His shot is blocked. Sanchez gets the rebound. And his left-footed offering is up and over the bar. This should just about do it for half number one. Goal kick here for Kitson and Nico Bratzis checking the watch. Rhinos have a 2-0 lead over Tampa. Gets the goal kick off the head now of Christie to steal. Greenfield slowing down Aaron King. Nice pass by Steele. Expect the unexpected with Jonathan Steele. As Ricardo or uh, Nico Bratzis blows the whistle. And half number one is in the books. The Rhinos have a 2-0 lead 
over the Tampa Bay Rowdies and the Rowdies Millian and some of the other players are still at the official about the PK call. And even Dalglish might make his way, I'm sure, to have a word with uh, the man in the middle. Well, I mean, it, it changes the match. I mean, when that happens, you know, if it's an if it's a you know 50-50 call, it changes the entire match when there's a penalty kick and. You know, it's a 0-0 match. And then before you know it, it, it it's 2 nothing. Last five minutes of the half, though, two goals. Yeah, Mike, what is that going to do to the, the the morale of the Rowdies? You know, five minutes into the half, and or five minutes left in the half, and it's 2-0. You give up those two late goals, and Rochester's got all the momentum, the Rowdies. Yeah, I mean, it kills you. It, it, it really hurts. I mean, you have, to go, you have to go to the locker room, and you have to regroup. And they have to... They have to go in there and say, we got to get out of here with at least a tie. And they've done it before. Down two goals, they've, they, they've, uh, they've gotten those ties. So don't doubt the right, Rowdies and the Rhinos. You know, we know historically, and this year, they've come out flat in the second half. And it's, it, it, it's happened. Year, every, not every game, but a lot of games this year, the Rhinos come out flat. And they're, they're going in with a lot of confidence, come out maybe overconfident. I would be absolutely stunned if Bob Lilly does not uh, mention that second half uh, sluggish start. All right, let's go down to the field, and we've got our goal scorer in the 41st minute off the PK, Jonathan Greenfield, joining us. Jonathan, welcome to the halftime show. Appreciate your time and uh, a 2 nothing lead, and really those two goals coming in, a, a devastating time for the Rowdies, but a great time for the Rhinos as you guys head into the locker room with a ton of momentum. Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, you know, the, the, the PK by Hemi, you know, I thought he did well to get it for us. Um, and then we kept on going with our momentum and a good, another quick goal and a corner kick, good delivery, dangerous in the box and a good finish by Kissy. So, you know, a 2-0 going half time is uh, pretty good, but the game's not over. It's still another 45 minutes to go. Hey, John, tell us about that PK. I mean, very calm, cool, collected. I mean, waiting for the keeper to make a move, and then you just push it to the opposite side. I mean, you're not the type of guy that just picked your point. You waited for him to make that move. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's, uh, once again, coming from a kind of a midfielder situation, uh, pretty composed. You know, I just try to go as slow as possible because uh, at the same time, the keeper's trying to pick his spot where he thinks I'm going, and I'm doing the same thing, and I'm trying to watch his body language. His body went to the left. And when, as soon as I saw that, I knew opportunity to go to, uh, to his right, so I just picked my spot. Yeah, John, that was a beautiful penalty kick. Hey, uh, let's talk about the midfield for Tampa Bay. They're loaded. I mean, they've got some great guys. What was Bob's, uh, what did Bob tell you guys before the game with Steele, Sanchez, Christie, Nyazamba? I mean, what, 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 what's the theory on what you guys are coming out with today? Well, he said, you know, he said, he, I mean, he, uh, he picked it up when he saw the sheet. He said, definitely, they're going to be playing a 3-5-2. Um, or even a 3-6-1, and, and that's pretty much it. You know, they're loading up their midfield with good, really good midfielders. Um, and, you know, we just had to clog it up. So I think we've done a good job in the first half, and uh, we'll try and keep doing that in the, in the second half and keep this uh, clean sheet. And, Jay, talk about keep doing it in the second half. Uh, Mike and I were talking before he got on headset. You know, there's been uh, at times the second half starts have been a bit sluggish. Uh, how's Bob and how's the team going to address that? Well, I'm sure Bob at halftime is going to, you know, get on us for certain things you know i think they had some opportunities early in the beginning of the game and uh you'll keep us going you know saying that you know this game's not over it's only up by two it's a dangerous scoreline two nil is always dangerous uh we got to get another we got to get the third to uh really solidify this game and one last question a long break august the 27th in montreal how does it feel to get back onto the pitch in live game action yeah i was pretty excited today you know i thought uh it felt like a kind of a home opener in some ways for me <laughs> Uh, such a long break and it's it's very unusual so I was very happy with it and uh, you know I'm just excited to be out here and lucky enough uh, Bob gave me the chance to get the PK and get a goal for the season. Hey, All right John, thanks great for your time, yeah, great stuff. Great to see you, great goal man, beautiful. Thanks. thanks a lot. Good luck in the second half, that's Jonathan Greenfield, his first goal of the year off the PK. He's got an assist to go along with that as well. All right, we'll take a short break. We'll come back with more on the halftime show. The Rhinos have a 2-0 lead over the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Gotcha. Yep. All right, Mike. So we'll come back. We'll look at stats. Kerms, where are you going to go? No, what are you doing? Which 
Mr. Moran, how are you? All right, we're going to come back. We'll do a, a look at the schedule, upcoming schedule for the Rhinos, okay? We'll do a quick look at the standings. Then we'll break, and then we'll come back and do official stats. Sound good? All right. I like when you call me boss. Thank you. <laughs> All right. What happens normally on the TV side of things is they cut the halftime show. They don't carry it because they want to fit it into a, uh, a strict two-hour time time block. So the halftime pushes it over just a bit. Yeah. And welcome back to the Rochester Rhinos Halftime Show. I am Joe Giuliano, the voice of the Rochester Rhinos. For tonight, Rochester came into the game, 26 games played. They've got four games remaining, well, three and a half now with the uh, 2 nothing lead over Tampa at the half. Miami FC will come to town on the 17th, September the 17th. Miami FC comes to town. It's also awards night to be a part of the action Call Ticketmaster or visit Ticketmaster.com. Call 454-KICK for more information. The Rhinos and Miami FC on the 17th. Then about a week later, September the 25th, the Rhinos, their second to last game of the season. They will travel down to Lockhart Stadium, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, to take on the Blues. And then October the 2nd, the last game of the 2010 regular season, Rochester at AC St. Louis for the first time. So looking at your standings now in the USSF second division, Vancouver in the NSL conference leads that, that group with 41 points. Carolina behind them with 37. In the USL conference, Austin tops the conference and the league with 49 points. Rochester just behind them with 48 points. But here is the kicker, here's the catch. Austin has played two less games than the Rochester Reynolds. But if you Check out the Aztecs' upcoming schedule. It is a lot of away games, and it's at a very difficult Carolina, a difficult Montreal. And tonight, they are just kicking off at Puerto Rico. 8.05 kickoff. Austin is at Puerto Rico. In addition to Tampa Bay at Rochester, Vancouver is at Baltimore. Portland is at Carolina. Montreal is at Miami. And Minnesota is at St. Louis this evening. That is a look at the schedule in the USSF second division. We'll take a short break, stick around when we come back. We'll look at the official scoring and stats from half number one, the Rhinos, with a two nothing lead over the Tampa Bay Rowdies on Sports Radio 950 ESPN. Mike, how long is this break? Thank you. See, th those pieces are too big. Use small pieces. That don't, you're not allowed to have a piece any bigger than this. Okay? Your, your scotch tape, look at this, look at this. That's waste. This piece could be one, two, three. Where's that gum? <laughs> right under my seat. <laughs> uh. So you playing indoor at all this year or anything? Yeah, I'll probably play in there. I'm t I, I need to take, I'm taking a few weeks off. I'm actually, I've been hitting the weights hard, and I've been hitting, and I've been running my, I mean, miles. Good for you. So I'm, I'm just, I'm taking the, uh, just soccer, a little bit of, I need some time away from yeah, soccer. Yeah, absolutely. I know how you feel. And then, you know, when November rolls around, I'll be like, raring to go again. I'm yep. going on a, on a, I'm going on a cruise in November. Good. For second week of November. And then after that, I'll be back into it. it but, it, you know, since starting that insanity, Dropped six pounds. 
Mike, you're gonna. It you is, like the Insanity yes, better than better, better than, than P90X? Yeah, why is that? Because P90X, you got to get resistance bands. You need a little bit of equipment here. Got to do pull-ups. This is just you. It's so you're gonna your burn own. it for me? Yeah, if you want it, I would love it. Sedge gave it to me. It's on like five different discs. That's it, just five DVDs. Five and six, but I burned them all on one. And you can and you got a menu and stuff. Yeah, you can click on what you want. I'll take it. All right, take care of you. Make me two. Why? Huh? Why two? So I, so I can have one at home and one uh, when I'm on the road. I'll put one in my laptop bag. That's what I did in Carolina, and in Baltimore. Had my laptop in the room. I've been doing. I've been doing some insane. I mean, I've got this uh, push-up workout. Oh. How long does it last? Even 10 minutes of push-ups is Yeah, amazing. that's it. Yeah. It's just 10 I, I, I think it's... Welcome back to the Rochester Rhinos Halftime Show. I'm Joe Giuliano. The Rhinos have a 2-0 lead over the Tampa Bay Rowdies. We're about five minutes away from the second half kickoff. And recapping what happened in the first half. All the action, really. Well, all the goal scoring in the last five minutes of the half. Minute number 41, Anthony Hamilton was taken down in the box. PK call. Jonathan Greenfield, nice and cool, steps in, slots it home. It was one nothing after 41 minutes. That was Greenfield's first goal of the year. In minute number 45, Isaac Kissy got his sixth goal of the year off a corner kick from Tyler Rosenland, and Kissy struck the ball off the hop, right-footed volley, nicely taken by the 22-year-old who uh, had a deep knee bruise. He finally overcame that. Now he's got six goals this year to go along with two assists, though it is 2-0 at the half. Your official stats, at one time it was 3-1 for the Rowdies, but now after 45 minutes of play, shots in favor of the home team, and they did take over the tempo of the game. They have eight. Tampa Bay has four saves, two for Kitson, and three for Lambeau, who's looked a little uncertain at times. No corner kicks for the Rowdies, four for the Rhinos, six fouls for the home team, and two for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. So again, your score is 2-0. We'll see how Rochester comes out in uh, half number two, as Mike and I were talking about. They've got a, a bit of a history at times to come off uh, the locker room with a bit of a sluggish start. And, uh, Mike, your thoughts on half number one. Yeah, great, great half for the Rhinos. I mean, up to nothing. You can't you can't ask for more than that. But Tampa Bay, they, they are they're such a great counterattack team. They're going to be dangerous. And, and as long as the defense can get the ball to the midfielders and let the midfielders do their thing, it's going to – the Rhinos still have their work cut out for them. You can't go in to nothing. I mean, one, once you get there – once you get a goal scored against you, now you're 2-1. Now the game changes. So it is 2-0, and as uh, Mike mentioned and Jonathan Greenfield mentioned, a very dangerous lead in soccer. I will right, we'll take a two-minute break. When we come back, we'll be ready for a second-half kickoff. The Rhinos have a 2-0 lead over the Tampa Bay Rowdies here on Sports Radio 950 ESPN. Mike, can you make this two minutes? All right, let's see if there's any changes. That our boy. What do you got? Give me the other 
it's And we are back at Marina Auto Stadium where the Rhinos have a 2-0 lead. Both teams making their way back onto the pitch. Rochester, Greenfield, and Kissy, the goal scorers. As these two teams played once before at Steinbrenner Field in Tampa, Florida. And a 90th minute goal by Isaac Kissy gave Rochester the 1-0 lead. Mike looking over the Rowdies lineup to see if there's any uh, changes. To start uh, half number two, flying uh, solo here for a minute as Mike uh, doing his job. A little performance taking place at midfield. The flag's flying at uh, half-mast. And, folks, today is September the 11th, and we should take some time to send our uh, best wishes, our condolences, our prayers to the families who lost loved ones in that terrible Incident on September the 11th. At the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, the only thing I have to say is God bless the USA. Yeah, I mean, everyone knows exactly where they were on that day. I mean, everybody knows. I mean, I, I was actually, uh, I was playing for the Rhinos, and I was, driving, uh, I was driving to work. I was working for a company called Manchester Technologies. As you know, I always played and right. had, a, had a side job. And, uh, One just, thing's never enough for you. No, I, you know, you, you continually look forward in life, and you had to build a resume. So when you were done playing soccer, you know, what, what are you going to do? And uh, I, was on my way, I was on my way to work, and all of a sudden I'm hearing stuff. on. Uh, I was actually listening to Brother Weeze, and I hear, I hear on the radio, uh, I got a, a plane just flew into the into – the, and, World and, Trade Center. Yeah, and and Brother Weez was like, all right, I, whatever. And he just kept going on with his shtick. Then all of a sudden, things kind of got quiet. And he's like, wait, a plane just really flew into the World Trade Center. And uh, then there you go. I mean, like, the world just stood still. I mean, at work, that's there was no work that day. No one was working. And, uh, you know, I, had, I being from Long Island, I definitely had some friends. And sure. a lot of friends and family that were uh, working downtown New York and – some uh, family friends that passed away, and you know it's uh, it, it's very tough. And I know that down there today, it's uh, just very very quiet times. It, it's it, it's it's very sad that the world's got to be like that. But living you know. a, a tough and difficult time, and uh, for myself, you know my job is a teacher outside of the uh, broadcasting world and the school. Everything stopped that day, and TV's on and. Dead silence. Total yeah. silence throughout the school. And, uh, again, our, our thoughts and our prayers go out to those who lost loved ones on that terrible, terrible September 11th day. Yeah. And a moment of silence took place tonight in a class move by the, the Rhinos organization. Yeah, you knew exactly where you were, exactly where you were standing. I was driving by the th uh, 495 90 exchange at that moment. I, I knew exactly where I was. And uh, it, it's pretty amazing. It was just just a tra just tragedy. And, uh, just, you know, it, hopefully that guy's dead, man. <laughs> you know? It's, I mean, that's sad to say, but... I, you, it, know, you hate to mix know. politics and, and such brutal actions with sports, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a huge part of the history of our great nation. And as I said before, God bless the, God bless the USA. Never, never would want to live anywhere else but right here in the great old U.S., Let's get back to the game here now as uh, there is a change made. Wheeler is coming on. He is number 21. We'll see who he's replaced. This change coming up at the start of the second half. Got Wheeler listed as a forward. We'll see if that uh, is where he takes his spot. Sanchez was kind of limping, Mike. Yeah, but it looks like King is out. Now King, You know, that hamstring might be bothering him a little bit. King was uh, very quiet. He's also, like you said, coming off the hamstring. And uh, is that who came out? Yeah. All right, so King is off. And let's see if Rochester made any changes. See, they're in the huddle, so tough to tell if there's any uh, new faces. And I doubt there would be after uh, an explosive five minutes. Yeah, it's not normal for Bob to make a change like that. And you know what? You didn't see anyone really warming up that hard. And you'd see a different type of warm-up by a player if they yep. know that they're going in. So, 
All right, Rochester, a little late coming out of the uh, the dressing room, but they've made their way onto the pitch, and they'll be attacking the goal to our left. Tampa Bay shooting down to our right has the kickoff. Sanchez, and I believe it's Christie, the two players who are uh, gearing up to get us underway. I'm not sure if that is Christie because he had red boots on in the first half. If it is, he's changed. No, he's got the same cleats on. As it's the back of the boot that's reddish pink. And we are underway. Yates gets it tomorrow. Now Diaz. He, now here you go with Wheeler. PDL's top scorer last year. MVP. Uh, this team, I mean, just this field right now. You got Johnny Steele, MVP. Wheeler, MVP. You got rookies of the year out here. And uh, this is this is a this is a very, very it, it, it strong almost, field. It, it almost seems like their their attack is set, their midfield is set. Then you kind of hit a brick wall when you come to the uh, the back line, which I'm sure Perry Vanderbeck and the rest of the Rowdies are, are are working on and addressing. And you know, as they play each team in the league, I'm sure there's notes made. Okay, you know, Trey Roberts uh, pitched Cole in for Rochester. You know, a lot of these guys are on one year deals, and there's going to be a lot of bouncing around, moving in and out between clubs. So for Tampa, for a first-year team in the attack and in the midfield, they've done a great job assembling a quality lineup. The back line has been their, their weakness. Yeah, I mean, let's not forget that. This is a first-year team fighting to get into the playoffs. And, you know, I've been there before and with, with the Syracuse Salty Dogs. It's not easy. You're battling, and you've got a lot of young guys with inexperience, and they're learning the game, they're learning the game at a different level. So it, it, it is tough, and same exact thing with the Salty Dogs our first year. We just made the playoffs, and uh, but when you make the playoffs, whole new league, whole, whole, <laughs> new, whole new season, and uh, that was, that was that very tough for uh, a lot of inexperienced guys. So, Did you play with uh, Steele and Syracuse, teammates? No, it was after I left he got there. Okay. He was, what, 17, 18 when he came? <laughs> <laughs> young, young boy. Throwing here on the near side for Greenfield. Yeah, Laurie Calloway, the guy that brought Johnny Steele over here. Calloway, uh, a great coach, and he really never afraid to go with young players, get him experience right into the uh, the starting eleven. No, the quote to me was, "Mike, there's younger, faster guys." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know what? There might be a spot for you in Virginia Beach. Calloway, not one to uh, to mix words. No, not at all. Pretty direct. Nice guy, though. I mean, uh, you know, all the respect in the world for Laurie. He's a very, very good coach. You know, even at even at 31, I was still learning. I was still learning stuff from from Laurie, and uh, he's a very nice guy, very heartfelt guy. He's all he does is mean well. He just and for the team, he just wants to win. So now coaching uh, in Des Moines, in Iowa, in the PDL. Laurie and the family have moved out there, and gotta keep in touch. I gotta give Laurie a call, see how he's doing. I haven't talked to him in a few months. And that's where he was before he, yeah. before he was with the Salty Dogs, and he had a lot of great players that he brought from there, and Ethan Gibson, and he brought another South African guy, just like Greenfield, and Lennon Steenkamp in town tonight. That's right, so a little reunion going, uh, going on here for you and the, some former Rhinos. Yeah, and Lennon. Spicer. Next week there's going to be a little, like a, a big group of you guys getting together here at uh, Marina Auto Stadium, isn't there? Yeah, there's about, I, I think there's about, I think uh, the office told me there's about 10 to 15 guys That's that great. Are be in town. Um, a lot of local guys right now, but um, you know th this is the first year. chance for Spicer. Top of the 18, off the post. Lambo was beaten and hit the post and bounces out. The goalkeeper's best friend keeps it from 3-0. And we'll get back to, back to what we discussed. <laughs> but what a great buildup. And Rosalind, he's just so crafty with the ball, and he just slots that ball to Spicer. Another bad giveaway by Naya Zamba. Malta Galvan. Rose on the right foot and shot. Side netting. Goal! Rochester! And what a beauty from Rosalind to start the second half. It's 3 nothing Rochester. What a gorgeous goal. I mean, the first one was Rosalind to Spicer. Spicer off the post. That one, Spicer to Rosalind. And what a great finish. Look at this. Look at this hit by Spicer off the post. Just a great hit. He's got to be like... He's, he's drooling there. <laughs> but there, here's Spicer. Mato Gavon, Mato Gavon sees Rosalind, Rosalind into the corner. Excuse me, but it was Spicer that built that play up. 
And what a great finish by Rosalind. And those are the ones you dream about, just all alone, and you're tucking it away into the side netting. Just beautiful, beautiful goal. And that's the way to come out in the second half. I was going to say, Mike, does this answer the question how Rochester is going to come out to start the second half? Five minutes in, they bury another one. Almost two. Second of the year for Rosalind. Second assist for Montegalvan. And Rochester now 2 nothing, a very dangerous lead. 3 nothing, maybe, maybe a bit much for the Rowdies to deal with. We'll see. Roberts off his head. Montegalvan. And a player is down. It looks like it is Steele. It was down inside the Rhinos 18. Rosalind trotting to the sideline, taking on some fluids. As he has got his second goal of the year, and boy, did he take it beautifully. I mean, and, and look what happens here. I mean, Naya Zamba Oof. with an awful giveaway there. And what a great pickoff by Spicer. Spicer sets this goal up with Mato Gavon coming right down the middle as a defensive center midi and sees his teammate from college. What a great goal, great finish, side netting. Those are the ones that you always remember. You always, and, and those are the ones you dream about when you're in the 18. Spicer, just all the space in the world. Great decision. Mono Gavon, wide open. Defender steps. Wide open. But the composure, that's one thing for, for people to keep their eye on. Mono Gavon didn't panic. Spicer didn't panic. And then Roseland, calm and cool. Finished it neatly. Great composure, top of the 18 where a lot of teams, a lot of players would panic. And Naya Zamba is actually coming off for Yamada. 52nd minute. And uh, Naya Zamba was the player who had that horrendous giveaway. And I think Tampa Bay definitely learning one thing against the Rochester Rhinos this year. If you're going to give the ball away in the final third, you'll be made to pay. As they did it down in Tampa. And they did it here again tonight with Naya Zamba. So King has come off. Naya Zamba has come off. Yamada is on. He's a 35-year-old from Japan. He can play pretty much all over the field. So we'll see where Dalglish is going to position the 35-year-old. You know, Naya Zamba was having a pretty good game. He was. Up good to that point. Yep. And, but you're, you're a defensive center midi. You're one of the guys that this team is relying on. You've got the experience on the pitch. And you give the ball away there in the defensive third. You can't do that. Monte Galvan to Rosalind. Rhinos are having fun now, just moving off the ball, a little bounce in their step. 3 0, 53rd minute. Look at the. Oh, Rosalind not expecting the quick one touch back. Sanchez comes away with it. Christie back here to Millian. There's Valentin with it. Coming forward now. Yamada to Wheeler, his first touch is intercepted by Spicer the Rhinos on the far side have it, Rosalind Moto Galvan high, long ball Diaz lets it bounce once Kissy let the foot off the pedal just a bit and Lambeau picked it up here's Christie drives one forward flicked into space looking for Steele and cleared away by Pitch Colon that was a risky play there. That was pretty risky. Good ball by Christie and great header by Sanchez. But just just risky there by uh, by the back four. And you know what? If you watch this back four, they're so in, they are so in sync. Yeah. So that's unusual for them. But just watch the back four. They just they know where all four of them are at the same at, at all times. They're they're like on a shoestring. One guy goes right, guy shift. It, 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 it's it's just real nice to watch the back four work from side to side in their defensive posture. Greenfield lets this one roll out of bounds. And the goal kick coming up here for Neil Kitson. 3 0 Rochester. Your goals tonight from Greenfield, from Kissy and Rosenland. Rosenland actually has got a goal and an assist. So he's having uh, quite the evening for Rochester. You know, we talk about Rosenland about eight games ago. And, uh, you know, we, we really. He we was in were, a funk. There's we, no doubt about we it. We were not nice to yeah, him. He was and, in a funk. And, and you know what? It, it was He wasn't playing well. He was giving the ball away. Here's another giveaway. Top of the 18. Rosalind. Chips and Lambeau backpedaling, able to scoop it up. Sorry about that. Just a little too cute right there by Rosalind. But but you know what? He's uh, just playing a phenomenal game tonight. He's all over the pitch. He's on the left side of the pitch. He's on the right side of the pitch. He's playing very crafty. He's uh, He's doing everything that he needs to do. 
for the position he's playing in. And, uh, ooh, he's doing a great job. Pitch Cohen headed the ball back. Kitson was sliding, ended up sliding outside the 18. And look at that. <laughs> I've never seen an official push a player like that. Did you see that? Uh, I think I've seen it before. but uh, I've never seen that. You know, Wheeler's about <laughs> six foot five, and uh, the referee is about... <laughs> You know, five foot nine, and hey, get off uh, me, man. Yeah, he pushed him right away. You know, push a, you know, yellow card instead of pushing him. So he uh, he wanted a yellow card, I think, issued to Kitson because he played the ball with his hands just outside the 18 near the end line. <laughs> well, you're talking about an experienced referee here, and you've got a young kid who's who's trying to tell him what to do. Yeah, Wheeler's 22. Dangerous play here. Sanchez with the restart just outside the 18. Look at Steele. Bounce it around into the box. Kissy heads it away. Top of the 18. Kissy gets his own ball. Step over gets away from Steele. Steele, a little smirk there. Knows he was done in by Kissy. Now into space for Kissy, and it's off the mark. I think Steele wanted a real big piece of uh, Kissy. Came steamrolling in. And there's a look back as a uh, referee. Just pushes away Wheeler. Says, get out of my space. <laughs> Good for him. One uh, not afraid to stand up for himself. Right. Take charge. I'll give the referee a yellow card there. Yep. I'm sure that'll be talked about uh, after the game with the crew. Here's Yamada, 35 yards out, middle of the field. <laughs> Comes to Millian on the near side. Relax, Joe. It's not that funny. <laughs> it was hilarious. It's not that funny. Hamilton pressuring Million. Spins away from him, crosses into the box. And Kitson calls off Roberts just in the nick of time. Together that one inside the uh, six. Kitson with the wind at his back. He can probably send this one down to the 18. As it is a booming kick. Valentin and Diaz backpedaling. Takes a hop at the 18 and Lambo will come out and... Uh, Distribute to the far side. Morrow has it. Christie to Valentin. Good ball by Yamada, but Millian's not going to win it before Greenfield. Now middle of the park, pitch Cohen. 58th minute, Rochester has a 3-0 lead. Spicer, nice little one touch outside to San Filippo. Now forward to Kissy. Valentin does a nice job to step in and clear it out of bounds. So two changes coming up here for the Rhinos. Hoxie and Franks are all checked in, just waiting for their stoppage. Jamie Franks, Andrew Hoxie. Morto Galvan. Kissy tried to lay it off for Rosalind. He does a good job to fight and win it back for the Rhinos. There's Spicer, San Filippo overlapping. Spicer cross into the box, Hamilton. Back across with the left foot, and Million knocks it off his thigh. And over the end line, corner kick number five for the Rhinos. So what the changes are going to be here is, I think it's Hamilton's number I see up on the board. So Hamilton Mike will come off for Franks. This change coming up in the 59th minute. Jamie Franks now coming on. This will be his 22nd. Appearance of the year, Anthony Hamilton working hard tonight. And Hoxie will replace Kissy. Also 59 minutes in. So Kissy is off. Hamilton is off. And Hoxie, 16th appearance. He's got three goals, five assists. He'll be coming on momentarily. San Filippo's cross into the box. Headed to Valentin. But Franks will keep the pressure in the Tampa half of the field. Rosalinda Franks, a right-footed ball that's driven into the box and cleared away by Diaz. So now Hoxie will come on. Let's make it the 60th minute for his uh, debut tonight. Mike Hoxie, three goals, five assists in 15 games played. He's out of William & Mary College. He was a San Jose Earthquakes draft pick. Kissy gets a nice round of applause as he scored his sixth goal of the evening this year. Tampa looks like they're going to also uh, 
make a change. Corner kick goes through the 18. Morrow has it on the far side. Long out of bounds. San Philip will have a throw in at midfield quickly, takes it to Franks. 60th minute. Mike, do the Rhinos let it up just a little bit here? Or they just keep going for more. Uh, you keep going for more. You just, you just, you just keep pressing and uh, keep. Pl the trick is not to change your game. Don't go into a, uh, you know, a, a six-three-one just because you're up. You, you, you keep playing your game. You're playing a solid game at a four-five-one, and uh, and that's what it looks like Bob's doing. He, he's keeping Versailles in there. He's got Mato Gavon right in front of the back four, and he's just continuing to play his match. Loose ball in the middle of the field. Now it's played outside for Morrow. And San Filippo, the patented move for Frankie is the slide tackle. And he pulls it off there. Going to be a change coming up here. Yates will be coming off momentarily. You know, when you're winning 3 0, you, you just swap a man for a man just for fresh legs. You don't have to change the formation, you don't have to change your style of play. You continue to play your game. Christie, top of the 18, and Steele wasn't making that cutting run. Thought Christie was going to pull the trigger, but uh, a little too unselfish there. Mikhail Galindo will be coming on now for Tampa. Another player who is on loan. He is from Chivas, USA. Yates coming off, the 22-year-old. And Galindo, this is his sixth appearance with the Rowdies. Another guy on loan. Long goal kick, flipped forward by Versailles. Over Hoxie's head, and Valentin will head it back to Lambo, who's given up uh, three goals this evening. It's not going to help that pretty high 1.67 goals against average. Off the chest, and Roberts just pounds it downfield. Keeps the Rowdies under pressure. Tampa Bay came into the game giving up 33 goals. Now it's up to 36, and that is third most in the league behind Miami and Baltimore who've given up 38 and 44 but this one's not done yet this one goes out of bounds Spicer clears it out and Neil Kitson is down looks like he's holding his left leg and Dave DePasquale the Rhinos trainer is making his way into the six and hopefully this is nothing serious for the uh, young Rhinos goalkeeper who's had a great season. I'm not sure, was there contact or was there an awkward slip? I, I didn't see where this injury had come about. Vallow's uh, loosening up. Kitson's taking off his gloves. This is not a good sign, is it? No indication yet from the trainers if Kitson can continue or not. As they're looking at the uh, the left leg, or looks like the left ankle of Neil Kitson. Rochester's made two changes, so that's not an issue. They've got plenty of uh, substitutions available. As it looks like Vallo is going to come in, Mike. Yeah, you swap a guy for a guy, and, and it's not a bad it's not a bad change. I mean, when you're swat, taking Sattler out and putting Lambo in, you know, there, there, there's definitely you know there's a level there, and. Uh, you're trying to get maybe Lambo some. I don't know what, why Sattler's not playing tonight. But you know what? None of the goals are Lambo's fault. True. I mean, I, I would not blame Lambo on any of those. I mean, you couldn't. You, you're you're uh, you're caught on the Rosalind goal. I mean, that's just a typical goal. I mean, you see that goal all the time. PK. Uh, the PK, and then um, you know that the the goal by Kissy. I mean, that ball did bounce, but it bounced between the six and the twelve. It wasn't Lambo's area. Right. So, I wouldn't blame any of the goals on Lambo. Scott Vallow getting warmed up. Uh, Billy Andracki, the goalkeeper coach for the Rhinos, uh, quickly heading at that uh, area to loosen up the Rhinos keeper. And looks like Kitson is unwrapping some sort of bandage on his left leg. And he's definitely going to be coming off. Vallow's making his way to the uh, scorer's table here. I'm not sure if it's the ankle or the knee. Again, he's laying down. The leg is up in the air. And if there's any looks uh, on replays, maybe that we could see where Kitson maybe came down in an awkward position. 
As the crowd uh, taking their time here now as Kitson's still getting looked at. Right on his trainer again is Dave DePasquale. So here's what's happening. We're in the 65th minute. The Rhinos have a, a 3 nothing lead. They've gotten goals from Greenfield, Kissy, and Rosenland. And we'll see if we can get a closer look at uh, what's going on down there as uh, Kitson has the shoe off completely. Socks, shoe, everything is off. And he's going to hobble off. It's definitely his left leg that's bothering him. But it's good to see he's not coming off needing any assistance. So Scott Vallow will come on. Scott Vallow having a great season as well. 11 games played, a 0.73 goals against average. That is number two in the league. So you don't get much of a drop off here when uh, you got two great goalkeepers doing their thing. This will be minute number 66. And boy, is this going to add a huge chunk of stoppage time. Gets in barefoot on the left side. Comes off. Vallo comes on. Kitson gets a nice round of applause. And he's talking to uh, his head coach, Bob Lilly, right now about the injury. So Vallo, not a lot of time to warm up, Mike. It's a cool night. Took a few shots from uh, Andraki. We'll see if Tampa tests him right away. Actually, I, I mean, when Bob was just discussing with Kitson, uh, hit the play that he made, rather than letting the ball go out for the corner, Kitson came out at the corner of the 18, and he got a handball outside the corner of the 18. So rather than getting a corner, which is a 35-yard ball into the box, they're playing a ball from 18 yards out into the box, and Kitson, being a young guy, doesn't just take it and, and just, you know, Goes back at Bob, and that's not the right thing to do. Yeah, absolutely, you gotta not. you gotta listen to your to your coach, and Bob is 100% correct. Kitson made a mistake, and you know what? Kitson's thinking, well, you know, I've got a shutout, but no, that's not it. You made a mistake that's going to give the give the game a 3-1 match instead of a 3-0 match. Absolutely correct. Well, Bob uh, made his way over again. Now he's back in his coaching spot. He is not happy. But uh, again, this is Bob Lilly always teaching, whether it's 3-0 or 0-0, always trying to challenge, get the most out of his players, and we saw it again there. You know, we forgot to talk about that. I mean, that was a huge error by Kitson. I mean, you don't see a lot of errors by these two goalies, no. and that, that was a huge error. Let that ball go out for a corner. We'll see. Uh, they're looking at the left leg still. We'll see if that's anything to be too concerned about as Galindo can't get a touch on it. Throwing in by Greenfield to Hoxie. And goes off of the big forward. Throwing here for the Rowdies. Diaz. Morrow on the far side. And San Filippo can't keep that one inbounds as the Rowdies will have a throw in 35 yards out on the far side. Sanchez tomorrow back to Sanchez coming towards the middle of the field. Little chip forward for Wheeler and Vallo with some help from Roberts will scoop that one up. Nice distribution here on the near side for Spicer. Monto Galvan. And this one gets away from Greenfield. We're talking about time to sp turn, spin, and look up. Switches it to the far side for San Filippo. Now Versailles. Time and space. Franks. Quick little touch back to Versailles. Good combination play here. Monte Galvan on the near side for Spicer. Comes off his chest. And Galindo will play it back to Lambo, who pops it forward. Greenfield gets away from Galindo now cuts it inside lays it off for Monto Galvan Sanchez good defensive work coming back but can't pressure enough to keep it out of his own half of the field and they're going to call offsides on Hoxie so it'll be a throw in or a free kick I'm sorry for the Tampa Bay Rowdies there's Jonathan Steele 
Christy. And just can't get that final connection up top as Christie's pass was intercepted. Hoxie gets the ball first before Steele. Rosenland to Franks. Far side possession here for the Rhinos. Good touch, Franks to Greenfield. Spicer. More to Galvan. He's going to lose this one. Wheeler's going to take it. He's 1v2. And Pitch Cohen stands him up well, and the Rhinos take it away as Wheeler even had gotten around Pitch Cohen. He still had three other defenders to deal with as San Filippo was chasing back hard. You know, watching up here, it's just so easy. I, I mean, I'm just sitting here smiling watching Wheeler go at the back at the back four, and I'm just <laughs> like, dude, you got no chance. Yeah. And they're going to call a foul on the Rowdies behind the play. Nico Bratzi's making the call. We are in the 71st minute. The Rhinos have a 3-0 lead. Joe Giuliano with Mike Kerms back in the house this evening. Good to have him back and uh, working tonight's game. Spicer gets away from him and goes out of bounds. A throw in here for the Rowdies. Looking for a ball, and Millian finally gets it. Sanchez back to Millian. That's a bad pass by Millian and intercepted by Montegalvan, Versailles. To Spicer. Inside to Hoxie. Maybe could have turned into the center part of the field. Tried to touch it instead and given away. Greenfield now takes space for Rosalind to turn. Montegalvan, center circle. Deflected forward. Near side, Sanchez. Right footed cross, looking for Wheeler. San Filippo has a beat on this one, but Wheeler with his tall frame just nudges it over San Filippo. Crossed into the box and deflected into the six. Scott Vallo picks it up there for the Rhinos. 73rd minute. It is 3 0 Rochester. 17th of September. That is next Friday. Miami FC comes to town. The Blues and the Rhinos will do battle again. And Miami definitely losing a. Uh, a huge part of their attack. Paulo Jr., the dangerous Brazilian, has been loaned to Real Salt Lake of Major League Soccer. We'll see if that loan comes to an end or and Paulo Jr. can return to the lineup for Miami FC. Hopefully not if you're a Rhinos fan and San Filippo is being called over by Nico Bratzis. And this could be our first yellow card of the game. Let's see. Nope. It was the Rhinos captain, a little tongue lashing, and that is going to do it. No yellow card. Greenfield clears away the header inside the 18. Sanchez looking for Valentin. Monto Galvan clears it to the middle of the park. Morrow has it now. Jonathan Steele who's really sitting back a little more now. Plays it forward into the box. Mikel Galindo with it now. Crosses and out of bounds by San Filippo. It'll be a corner kick for the Rowdies. It's their second corner kick, I believe, of the game. Great crowd this evening after a 15 day layoff. 8,197. 8,197 this evening. Short to steal. Corner of the 18, driven into the box through everyone. That's a good ball. That Yamada and some of the other forwards need to get their face stuck onto. Oh yeah, they need they need to throw their bodies into sacrifice. the box and just sacrifice everything to get get something on it. Uh, I mean Sanchez to steal and just what a great screamer from Steele. Good ball. So 81-97 on this beautiful evening for soccer in Rochester, enjoying hopefully the three goals by Rochester, maybe a few more to come. Franks. Valentin steps in front there. Diaz gets it forward now to steal. Galindo with it now, 30 yards out. Little touch forward into space. San Filippo takes it off the foot of Wheeler. And Vela will knock it down the park. Headed back in by Yamada. 
Steele, nice little chip into the box. Takes one hop. Greenfield. <laughs> Ooh. Little calm, yeah. cool, and collected right there. I, I'll tell you, I mean, I would have... I would have been kicking that thing way out, of the, <laughs> way out of the park for a corner kick for sure, but um, just he's just calm, cool, and collected tonight on the penalty kick, on, in the 18, in the 6. Yeah, took it out nicely and avoided any danger as Christie has it now. You can see a little bit of a change in the flow of the attack, though. You can see the Tampa Bay starting to get some opportunities, some crosses into the 18. I mean, the back four is still solid, but still they're starting to give Steele and Sanchez a little bit more room, and even Galindo's getting more into the mix here. You can see a little bit of the change change of the flow. Here's Steele again to Yamada. Now to Christie. He's going to take it touch forward. Sanchez on the near side, cuts it back to his preferred left foot, looks up, whips one on the ground into the 18. Christie, now Wheeler. And Pitch Colon just barrels through that one and clears it out of bounds. And they're pushing forward. I mean, Sanchez just put the ball in, into the box, and there was Galindo, Christie, and Wheeler all sitting there only against two center backs. Yeah. So it, they're, they're pushing. They want, to, uh, they want to get some goals here. And you know what? There's time. There's 15 minutes. We've seen crazier things happen in this sport. Hoxie step over, gets away from Diaz. Inside the 18, drills one at the near post. Lambo makes the save. Speaking of crazy things, you saw it in the EPL today. Everton, 91st minute, 93rd minute, 3-3 final against Man United. Throwing on the far side. Hines is checking in with the fourth official. Hoxie with it. Pressured by Steele. Double team, but Hoxie is dragged down to the turf and picks up a free kick. A mile away on the far side near the corner flag. Steele's telling him right there, hey, listen, I'm 5'8", you're 6'7". How the heck did I drag you down? Come on, you think Steele's actually having a couple words in the field with somebody? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, Hoxie did flop there. I mean, come on. Basically a corner kick set up here for Franks. Gives the signal, drives it into the box, and Wheeler will clear it away. Yamada. Has to get it forward, but intercepted by Montegalvan. And played all the way back to Scott Vallow. 78th minute. 3-0 Rochester. Greenfield. Checking back to receive the ball is Versailles. This ball's into space. Spicer and Diaz racing for it. And Diaz, good shoulder charge there. Good challenge. And Spicer comes back with one of his own. And let's see if it's a foul or a goal kick as two players getting. It is a free kick. Spicer just wanted to get a piece of Diaz after that challenge. Uh, Diaz is a big boy. He and is Spi a big Spicer boy. Spicer felt it. <laughs> Spicer felt it. So change coming up here. Spicer is the one who's going to come off. Mike, 78th minute. Spicer comes off. Hines comes on. Very good match for Spicer tonight. I mean, on the right-hand side, I like him a lot better on the right-hand side than the left-hand side. A lot of this season, we saw him on the left side of the pitch, and uh, I, I feel he's a better he, he's better coming from the right side. He had a great match tonight. So Hines, he's got four goals and an assist. This will be his 24th appearance of the year. Very active, lots of touches, l l no, not a lot of giveaways, just really threading the ball, just... Very, very active, and uh, I, I like Spicer on the right side tonight. Good game for Spicer. Valentin to Millian. Trying to come out of their own half. Quick one-two. Millian to Sanchez. Long ball forward, looking for Galindo. Top of the 18. Valo comes out nicely with the right foot. Clears it away, but Greenfield's header finds Wheeler, and, and there's going to be the for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 79th minute, Monto Galvan picks up the yellow first card of the game. And this is one of those free kicks, and Christie's faking it. <laughs> you know, Christy, don't even think about it, Sanchez <laughs> is saying. But, I mean, there you go. I mean, Tampa Bay, Rhinos put a little bit of pressure, and they're depending on Million to get the ball out of the, out of the back. You've got to depend on your midfielders, not your outside backs. And, and that's, the, that's the young. I think you've got some midfielders, natural midfielders, playing in the back for Tampa Bay right now. It's a young team. It's a, it's a first-year franchise, so you're going to see that. But they, they, this team is going to be tough if they can keep their guys. 
Sanchez can, can, can bend it like the best of them here. Here's his free kick around the wall and just wide of the post as it's deflected. And you talked about it at the start of the broadcast. Don't give Sanchez those opportunities. As the deflection may have kept that one out of the back of the net. Corner kick for the Rowdies. Sanchez drives it into the box and Vallo. Looks like he's played all game. He's got his touch, 81st minute. Keeping the Rowdies uh, at bay so far. Good driven punt by Vallo for Hines. Steele gets his head on it to the far side. Morrow to Diaz. The Rowdies making the return to professional soccer after playing in the North American Soccer League 1975 through 1984. Steele tries a low cross, can't get it through. Pitch Colin. And San Filippo get it forward to Franks. Here's Hoxie. Nice touch. Tampa also had an MLS squad for That's right. three seasons. That's right. The four, mutiny. Four seasons. Former Rhino Craig Demon spent a year there as well. Played with Carlos Valderrama. Not a bad, not a bad gig. And uh, Steve Ralston, Carlos Valderrama. Some, if uh, I'm not mistaken, Tampa Bay came here and were stunned in the U.S. Open Cup. Chris Kennel with a dramatic game winner. Speaking of the mutiny again from MLS. Monto Galvan, Versailles. Just pressured there, given away now in the middle of the field for Wheeler. Still with it, Wheeler. Gets away from Monto Galvan. Hines comes in and another foul called just for the little clip from behind by Monto Galvan. And Sanchez likes what he sees here. He says, okay, the first one didn't work. Let's have another go at this. Is he shooting or serving, Mike? What do you think? It's a little. Oh, uh, he's ripping it. Maybe 30 yards away to the left of Vallow. And he is ripping this one. And again, it just whistles wide on that near post there. I mean, that, that's the shot he wants, but he's just not putting enough power on it. He's hitting it right, just not enough power. And it's getting away from him. And Vallow's got it covered for sure. So Nano Short coming on for Rosalind. What a night he had. One goal, one assist. This change in the 83rd minute. I mean, outside of the stats, he still had a great game. I mean, he Rosalind was all over the place. And the one thing that we were all over him about were, was his giveaways. And he did not give the ball away tonight. Unforced giveaways. You know, I had a chance to speak with Bob Lilly about uh, that little rut that Rosalind found himself in. And Bob said, listen, you're a pro now. Just play through it. Just keep working hard. And that's exactly what he's, he's done. And he's found himself in a pretty good spot. Yeah, and we talked about it. What he had to do was just get the ball and play simple soccer, and he didn't do that. He was still trying to make those difficult threads, and it didn't happen for him. Steele to Sanchez. Pressured by Greenfield and Hines. And actually, Greenfield did a good job not to give away a corner kick. Throwing instead on the near side for the Rowdies. Does Yamada have a flip throw here? Only one person has the flip throw. And he's sitting next to me. Who, Craig? <laughs> he's got a good long throw, though. Yeah, he does. Flicked on by Wheeler. And Versailles gets it out of the 18. Valentin to steal. Looking for Wheeler. No one there. They're backing off, and Greenfield will just clear it to the middle of the park. Steele's going to try another one here. Outside to Morrow. Rano's mascot stuck uh, three quarters of the way up on the fire truck ladder behind the goal at the open end of the stadium. I think he's afraid of heights. I think he's scared. I think he's scared to come down. Throwing for San Filippo on the far side, 84th minute. Rochester coming off a tough 2 nothing loss in Montreal. And wow, what a way to bounce back. Short. Looking for Hines, comes off his boot onto the foot of Millian. Christie now. Short tugs him down from behind, and Christie and Short not happy as they both get up, kind of nudging into one another. You know, Short not known to shy away from a tackle. Yeah, but not a good way to come onto the pitch. Your first touch is a giveaway. Your next, your next opportunity, you, you tackle the guy and. Uh... Sets up a yeah. free kick now for Sanchez and in the Tampa. Third. 
and Tampa's attacking third. So just got just got to get his head back into the game. Just relax. We're up three nothing. This time he serves a swerving ball that's headed away by Pitch Colon. And throw in here for Tampa on the near side. So if this holds, Rochester will sweep the season series with the Rowdies winning down in Florida. And uh, so far in control here at home. Long ball, bounces at the six. Roberts clears it to the top of the box. Christie fires with the right foot. And he's not gonna get a hold of that one. As Christie, the 27 year old. Seven games played, two goals, one assist this year. Appeared in two games for New Zealand in the World Cup. Actually played the last five years in the uh, Australian A-League. As Val taking his time here. That's the uh, push from uh, Nico Bratzis. Headed forward, Wheeler looking for Galindo. Val top of the 18 will bomb this one downfield. Million. Christie pressured by Short and flails around with the uh, elbow and Christie finds the eye of Nano Short. And they're gonna give Nano Short a yellow card for this. As he was pressuring Christie from behind, he kind of swung the arm and got Short in the face. And I think Short's gonna be surprised when he gets up and sees a yellow card now coming his way. So short, 87th minute, not making the most of his opportunity here. Yes, he took the worst of it and also got a yellow card. You know, that's just that's just part of the game. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not sure if, his if there was arm, intent. Yeah. Arm, yeah, I don't know if there was intent. Sometimes there is, and uh, he Christy made it look real good. It, it was. She sure did. Yeah. Montagavan off the right foot. Millian. Touches it one way, goes the other around Hines. He takes him down. Here's another yellow card, I'm sure. As Hines call for the foul. Christie's getting a little feisty now. He's got a tug of the jersey. He's got Hines' jersey in his hand. You know, either way, when you're up 3 nothing, Sanchez, that swerving, dangerous ball into the box. When you're up 3 nothing, it's tough to come on the pitch when the, you know that your job is to defend the rest of the match. And... Uh, you could see that Hines and, and, and Nano Short, they're getting a little bit frustrated taking guys out. Hoxie's working hard here, just fighting and battling. And he's out there on, you know, he's trying to do it on his own. It's tough to come into a match when your only job is to prevent goals. Long ball into the box. Vallo drops this one in Versailles, able to clear it at the top of the 18. There's uh, some confusion inside the box, but luckily cleared away for the Rhinos. 88th minute. Steel to Yamada. Morrow now on the far side. Still looking for a service here from the Rowdies. They go back to Diaz. Now he sends a long one into the 18. Pitch Colon prevents that from getting in the box and gets his head on it. As it's getting a little chippy and sloppy here. I'm not sure why Versailles called for a foul there. As I thought the Tampa player came in with the studs up on that slide tackle, but yeah, that was that was that was a foul by uh, I believe a Yamada there. And here's a yellow card for Franks, or just a warning. But and, and like I said, it, it, it's it, these are these are young players, and you know you talk about experience, and, ex, and an experienced player comes on the match, and they c continue to keep the game slow and slow the game down. And what these guys are coming on, I'm not saying they're playing bad. But they've got to come on, and they what they want to do is they want to play the game. They want to go, go, go. But this isn't the time to go, go, go. Steals ball into the box. Wheeler and Pitch Colin got tangled up. And that gave just enough time for Vallow to come off his line. 90th minute. Vallow with the ball in his hand. The Rhinos with a 3 0 lead. I mean, it's a good thing that you got San Filippo, Pitch Colin, Roberts, and Greenfield, all experienced players, just trying to calm them down. And even Mano Gavan and Versailles, who haven't come off the pitch yet, they're still trying to play the game. The guys that are tackling, you got Short, Hines, Franks, getting a, you know, those are the guys who are getting the, getting the fouls. 
And short call for the foul. That's a clean slide tackle. He got the ball, and Nico Brazzi said no and steal. And short, pretty explosive. Pretty explosive. Ooh, Ooh. and that's an opportunity for Wheeler there in the 18. Dangerous chance there, and uh, Wheeler knocking on the door. As Tampa's come on, gotten a few chances. Five extra minutes. That's a huge chunk of stoppage time. Uh, let's remember Kitson. Yeah, that's right. Kitson was down for a good time period there, so that's that's, right. that's justified. Goal kick for the Rhinos. Vallow to take it. Flicked on by Short. Here's Hines. Diaz pressuring him on the near side. Hines cuts it to his right. And to push it inside, still outside. Here's Greenfield to come over and help out. And Greenfield slows it down. No urgency, no needed here for the Rhinos. Not needed for the Rhinos as uh, it gets away from Greenfield and short. A goal kick coming up here for Tampa. As this one's got a little chippy here. I wonder if the, uh, the chippy stuff is done. You get a sense maybe there's a couple more to come. Millian. Over Wheeler, Roberts flicks it back, and Montegalvan now gets it to Greenfield, and Wheeler just comes in and gets him right on the top of the foot with the studs. And as I said about 10 seconds earlier, some of the chippy stuff, probably not done just yet. Yeah, that was a clear foul. I mean, that was that was a late tackle. The, the, the assistant referee is the one who raises his flag, and... and I didn't hear a whistle from uh, no, he, Brazzi at all. I he kind of looked and said, what are we doing here? That is painful. He I mean, comes through on the ball. Yeah, cleats up on Yamada, call on Versailles. Bad call, great tackle by Short, call on Short. Uh, bad tackle here by Wheeler, and I don't even know if the if the ref was going to call it. Now they're talking about it now, the referee and his assistant on the near side, so there could be a card issued. The referee's assistant was right on top of the play. And Greenfield just comes swinging through with the uh, the strike of the ball, and he finds the bottom of, uh, of of Wheeler's foot. So we'll see what the situation is here. The Rhinos have already lost Neil Kitson to a left leg injury. We're in stoppage time. And uh, the last game in Tampa, the Rhinos. Greenfield's wow, Greenf off. Yeah, he's hurt. He's definitely hurt. Too many uh, injuries for the likings of uh, Rochester fans, and it's his left foot that's clearly hurt. So it's been the injury of the left foot tonight. Kitson's now Greenfield's. No card issued, nothing. Uh, Rochester's made five changes, so they cannot make any more substitutions. They'll play with uh, Greenfield out. Bellows told to play on by Nico Brazzi, so there's a look at it, Mike, on the replay. Oh, yeah, I mean, look at that. Cleats yeah, up. Yeah. There, no way he's going to get the ball. It's his knee. He got his knee. Oh. He got his knee real bad. Hopefully Greenfield can overcome that because he's had a great season. Hoxie, Franks to Versailles. Now Montegalvan and Hoxie tries to keep it in on the far side. We're in stoppage time. They called for five minutes and now it's just getting sloppy as Morrow comes in late and sloppy. He'll get a yellow card. This one uh, not done being ugly yet. As you don't want to open a can of worms here, but as far as injuries go, Rochester, knock on wood, has been uh, has been good tonight. Kitson and Greenfield have gone down. There's Franks. Greenfield slowly making his way to the fourth official, and uh, looks like he's going to toughen this one out and head back onto the field. 
Uh, my mistake. He, he did get in the ankle, and it was a cleat. It was cleat. Oh, he, he came yeah. in, yeah, a yard or two away with that boot up. Into space for Sanchez on the near side. No one there to support him as he gets dumped, and the Reynolds come away with it. Monto Galvan to Hines. Five minutes of stoppage time called for. A huge portion of that already played. Troy Roberts drives it with the left foot. No one down there for the Rhinos. So Christie has it. Greenfield able to come back onto the pitch. Now Valentin. Morrow on the far side. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, Greenfield is limping out there. I mean, he... let's hope he's not going to make it any worse because he's. Yeah, you're better off playing top. with ten men than uh, risking further injury with the Greenfield. You could see he just hesitates. He doesn't even want to get within five yards. Morrow crosses into Wheeler, gets the head on it, and it's up and over the goal. That should just about do it. As Nico Bratzis blows the whistle, and the Rhinos keep the sheet clean. But even at the end there, there's an opportunity with a head. I mean, I... I Tampa I had chances. Yeah, I mean... They had chances. Wheeler, Wheeler, you know, he could have done better with his headers there. I know a guy I used to play with in college, Larry Martin. He scored some great goals with a head, and Tampa could have used them tonight. So Rochester wins this evening 3 nothing over the Tampa Bay Rowdies. We'll take a short break and come back on the Rhinos broadcast network. I didn't hear what you said. Larry who? I was talking to John. I didn't hear what you said. What did you say? So, okay, no, no specific highlights. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right. Larry Martin, is he from Syracuse? I think I played. Some, did he go to Chittenango? Oh, we beat them. Uh, my his senior year, my senior year, and his. How old is he? He graduated in 92. From high school? College. So his junior year. We lost beat, they two. were undefeated. Yeah, lost to. Uh, and we knocked them out in the same state semis. Coin field in Syracuse. Oh. Snow covered. Beat them three to one. Uh, I scored the game winner. Let him know that too. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> what was the score? Three one. Yeah, Chittenango undefeated. Then Greece Arcadia came to town. Then in the state final, six yards out, up over the goal. We you? lost one. Yep, lost one nothing. Okay. All right, Mike. We're gonna come back, do a quick TV close, and then go to break, and then we'll come back with their post game stuff. Is it okay? All right. All right, so ja ja semifinals. Semis, 87, 86. If he's the one who played at Chittenango. Oh, yeah, that's him. About 30 seconds. <laughs> And welcome back to Marina Auto Stadium. Your final score this evening, the Rochester Rhinos 3, the Tampa Bay Rowdies nothing. And the two goals coming at the last five minutes of the first half and the first five minutes of the second half. The Rochester Rhinos got their third goal to get their 15th win of the year. And depending upon what Austin does this, year, this evening, the Rhinos have 51 points and uh, maybe sole possession of that uh, overall league lead. The Rowdies are 0-2-4 and 4 
in their last six games. They dropped down to 6-10-10. and 10. Mike, on the TV side of things, your final thoughts? Very good game by the Rhinos. It's one of the best I've seen them play. I mean, they just kept possession of the game. It was just pretty soccer and uh, three goals. You, you can't ask for more, a 3 nothing win against what I think is a, a very solid team on paper. Except, and, and But you can see the weakness is the back four, and that's what's killing this team right now. Tampa so the Bay. Rhinos are 3 nothing winners this evening over the Tampa Bay Rowdies. For those of you watching on TV, we're going to wrap it up on the TV side of things. Radio postgame show will continue next for our TV producer, John Catalano, and my personal assistant, Pedro Ugalde. For Mike Kerms, I'm Joe Giuliano saying good night from Marina Auto Stadium. The Rhinos are 3 nothing winners.